Good afternoon and welcome to the bronze medal game of the 2017 Senior Men's AA Provincial Hockey Championships in Wainwright, Alberta. The Hillman Hitmen in white face the tournament host Wainwright Rustlers in what should be a highly competitive bronze medal contest. Hello hockey fans, I'm Kevin Donnan with ICU Video and I'm pleased to be joined by my broadcast partner Dave Dawson as we bring you the bronze medal game. Dave, both, of, both teams have battled hard all tournament. But Hillman comes in a little bit behind the eight ball. Yeah, they are. They got uh, some bodies out of the lineup already starting this tournament without second leading scorer Michael Hefner. They are going to be without Brad Cruikshank as well as Timothy Priest today amongst many other banged up bodies, Kev. Five injuries in total plus a couple of other players who had other commitments, work commitments, who couldn't get into the, uh, get in, into the tournament or into the lineup. But this Hillman team does not know the meaning of the word quit. No, they don't. And I'll talk to Rod Bhutan, the president of the Sask Alta League in the second intermission, all about that. Also had a chat with Brew Man, one of the defensemen for the, for the Hitman, and said, you know, we've been highly competitive. We've done a really good job considering what we've been up against in terms of an undermanned club. Yeah, 18-1 club, a 14-1-0-3 club, and an 18-0 club. They're the, the team that... Uh, is just happy to be here with the air quotes, but I'm sure they'd be happy to walk away with the bronze medal that Wainwright won last year. Extremely proud team. So here we are with the action in the bronze medal game. Both teams getting settled in, and here comes number 26, Brad Crookshank. Didn't take the opening warm-up. Warm no, warm up. no, he did not take the warm-up, which is a bit of a surprise. So he was a, a, one of those late additions. Late additions <laughs> or one of those game, as we say game in the business, decisions. a game time decision. So Dave, wh what does Wainwright have to do when you're facing an undermanned club? What do they have to do? Yeah, well, Hillmont, I think, uh, probably just has to be responsible. And if they get into penalty situations. We've talked about that the entire time. But keep the game simple, Kev. I know you don't want to get into a high-speed chase with the wrestlers because we know what they can do with those four lines. They're responsible. A big hit by number 16, Joey Miazga. And play the body, too. That never hurts at all. Here we are. Bronze medal action. So glad you're along with us. ICU Video Productions. Here's the wrestlers with a big shot on goal. That's Jimmy Peterson, the starting goalkeeper. Lost sight of the puck. Was right in front of him, but he covers up, and we are... One minute and 37 seconds into this bronze medal game, and we're so glad to be with you. And we are so happy with the provincial sponsors of this tournament. We'll be sharing those with you, Barrett Oilfield, Battle River Electric, and many, many others, and we'll be sending those mentions along. Jimmy Peterson is a busy boy in opening night against uh, Days Land and shared duty with Paralad, played yesterday. But Jimmy P is going to have to be big if Hillmont's going to an early penalty here already, I think. Hillman nope, lost. Just a face off. Just a face off. Hillman lost in their opener nine to two, but the score isn't indicative of how of how well the Hitmen played, Dave. No, very undermanned. They were tied. It was three two, I believe, up until midway through the uh, third period, and Riley Benefield took over the leading scorer of this tournament. So they can get it done. They just don't have the bodies. Absolutely, and and this Hitmen team, a very proud group, as are the Rustlers, of course. The Rustlers are in their visiting black uniforms because. Uh, they did not earn the right to be home team for this game as Hillman was Hillman lost their first two, so they earned the home ice designation. But Wainwright, of course, in their own barn, so technically <laughs> hard to call them the away team, but uh, that's how a short tournament works. Let's not discount the uh, divided town right now. Half of them are in St. Paul. Absolutely. The Junior B Bisons, who are in the championship game yep. today. So up, we up against Cochrane. And as we said last night, Wainwright, Alberta, the hotbed of hockey. Yeah, and I was even talking to one of the tournament organizers, Josh, about how the continually the feeder system goes through, right through to junior up to the senior ranks, and a lot of activity around the city in the hockey ranks. But man, they're divided today. And what a great community too, and what a great facility here, the Peace Memorial Multiplex. The true community, the heartbeat of the community, really. And here we go in the corner now to the right of Goodwin, the keeper for the Rustlers, who has gone the whole way for Wainwright in this tournament. Crookshank on the ice there making a difference already as he did yesterday. Crookshank, a very, very lethal scorer in this tournament, has played, has been one of the top offensive stars for Hillman in, in this tournament. Here we are in game six, this bronze medal game. So glad you're along with us. 
Hockey Alberta, the AA Provincial Championships. Far boards now into the corner. Hillman. That's Newman, the captain. The defenseman joining the rush and into the corner. Looking to freeze the puck along the boards, but it squirts loose. There's and a there's a penalty call there on number four, Spencer Gosselin, as he, t as he hits number 22, Jordy Dugan. And there's Dugan again, mucking it up, causing uh, penalties as we get uh, a few different camera views here today. Great uh, broadcast crew we got along with us. We get a quick look at the replay on that uh, check from behind in a second. As, yeah, you see uh, your back's facing the wall, head first into the boards. That'll put you down for two or less. Hillmond on the power play this tournament, two for nine, as Wainwright is 10 for 15 on the penalty kill. Dave Dawson, not only one of the best play-by-play -play men in the province, but one heck of a statistician, too. <laughs> Well, if there's one thing that I'm allowed, you got all your uh, little Doninisms that uh, are <laughs> laying around in your brain, so I got to find a way to add something <laughs> to the broadcast. Doing so much work at the U of A, I think Dave had a stroll through the math department. <laughs> Here we go, neutral zone now. Hillman on the power play here, Wainwright. Of course, ha has had some issues with discipline, Dave, in this tournament. Yeah, they've been able to get uh, yesterday in their the game that put them into this bronze medal game against Daysland last night, a couple of power play goals against that almost eliminated them from it. But nonetheless, they want to win today. they got to be smart on special teams. Rustlers, of course, have the bronze medal within reach. Of course, they took the bronze last year in this tournament. We'll have a rematch. And tonight's, uh, tonight's gold medal game is going to be a special one, Dave. Oh, clash of the titans absolutely easiest way to say that the last two years those two teams have met in the provincial final and i can't wait for four o'clock and we've got a good one here here's noble number seven with a quick shot from his off wing and the play blown dead yeah, just a simple shot by noble down the right wing side to get a quick look at this from our replay crew with 47 seconds left in the power play just a forehand and waiting for dugan to get to the net maybe he probably would have want to put them onto the right pad rather than the left but Either way you look at it, all shots are positive. Face off outside the Wainwright zone. Dugan and Crookshank, along with Noble, the forward unit on this power play. Newman, the captain, nice cross-ice pa cross pass to Crookshank, and he'll dump it in where Noble will give number 21, Morgan McKay, a bit of a bump. Now here's the ever-dangerous Jordy Dugan, the assistant captain. Here's Noble cycling down back to Dugan on the half wall. He looks to the point. He retreats into the corner, back out to the point to Newman, cross ice. Good puck movement by the hitman, and that nearly finds the twine. Here's Newman now, kept in the zone. The captain over to Dugan, number 22. He'll look and fire a wrist shot. Good save by Goodwin through traffic, and they'll clear. Good job fighting for that puck by Goodwin through two bodies, and uh, Dugan waited for that to set up. The power play's over. Long lead pass by the goalkeeper, cut off by Gosselin, and a goal! Big save by Jimmy Peterson. The right shoulder as he robbed number 17, McMahon, who was right in tight. Yeah, go ahead, Kev. Big save by Peterson. Yeah, that long lead pass from uh, Peterson got picked off by Gosselin, coming out of the box, which was going to be an odd man rush for the hitman, but turned into a chance for the wrestlers. Here are the wrestlers. Now shot, quick shot. Off the side of the net. And the battle behind the net. These two teams, no strangers to each other. 1-2 yeah. in the Sask Alta League, Dave. Yeah, the uh, Hitmen were ranked fourth overall in the league, but managed to make some noise, knocking off Elk Point in the semifinals, who knocked off Dubery previously, who finished second, two points behind Wainwright. So they know about each other. Peterson tries to clear that puck, but the defenseman, Paul Oteski, gets caught up in his skates. And the hitmen try to break out here. Pretty good forecheck by Wainwright early on, Dave. Yeah, some intensity there, and they just missed Renier on that. And here's a steal. Pass. In on goal. Offside. Oh, no, and offside. I, 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 didn't, I didn't catch the whistle, yeah. so forgive me. It's a bronze medal game, Dave. I'm pumped All up for this All the excitement. One. You know what? And I, I, honestly, I was just going to say the breakout pass by the hitman. Nice, hard, crisp passing. Renier just missed that pass as he was coming off on the line change, but that would have been an odd man opportunity, and that was exciting to watch, Cap, for sure. Absolutely. Here we go, Rustlers back to the live action here down in the corner, and the Hitmen gather the puck. Miazga in there, number 16 for the Hitmen. Puck played around and cleared out by Politeski. 
into the neutral zone. Gosselin gets a bump from Noble. Played up to Clausen, number six. He feeds it down to number 13, Quinn Costa, who's probably the most energetic wrestler out there as he's been all tournament. Yeah, him and Trotman, probably the two energy players of this tournament that have been able to ruffle some feathers. Why don't we just throw Jordy Dugan in that category as well? Small in stature, but you can't measure heart, Dave. Kenny Lindsman, right there. We've got three of them. I'd love to see those three on the same line. Oh. And I wouldn't. And if you're a, and if you're against them, that'd be one long afternoon. Yeah, you need to um, take some meditation before that just to get your mental state set because you'd be, <laughs> you'd be ready to ready to get big tad. And here's a big hit on the near boards and a penalty called. Leggett takes the hit. Penalty coming to number 24. It's callback again. Lance callback of the hitman. As I mentioned earlier in the tournament, he might get a callback from the league on that as that is his second uh, penalty that um, was near the boards and might draw some interest. And Wainwright Leggett wasn't happy with that as he's no, beacon in the box. Taking a long look into the penalty box over there. And one thing I want to tell our viewers is that this is an ICU video procast. We have four cameras today for the bronze medal and, and gold medal games, and we've got complete coverage, and we've got a fantastic crew, Dave. Yeah, some intermission interviews as well. Really excited to bring you this uh, procast weekend for this beautiful facility in Wainwright. Anderson fans on that shot. Rustlers on the power play now. Along the half wall, here comes you know, feeds it back into the corner. That's number 18, Adam Creasy, the captain. He'll wait. And we'll cycle it through. Shot on goal in number 17. That's Brett McMahon. He pulls the trigger quickly, but there's Jimmy Peterson, number 39, with the big stop, Dave. Played that cycle to perfection. They were waiting for that uh, slot pass to McMahon the whole time, as you see Marshan down low. And... Yeah, waiting right in the slot. That's 47, Ryan Anderson, actually. And got Thanks that shot that away. One. Right in the breadbasket of Peterson because he was good in position. Rustlers now. 1.23 to go on the power play here. Following the penalty to call back of Hillman. Now out front. Check that back behind the net. Here's McKay, number 21. Plays it down for Anderson. Now McKay. Back. Check that, that's Laporte. And it will be Nick Laporte. Rustlers now, here's Brad McNabb, the leading scorer for Wainwright. And try, they try the cross ice pass and it is cleared by Brad Crookshank, number 26. Nice tight box by the hitman there, sticks in the passing lane. They're looking for that backdoor pass to the side of the net, but Dugan and company, great job collapsing down low. Good discipline on the penalty kill for Hillman, and they've got 30 seconds remaining to kill this one off. No score here at the near midway point of the first period. Ten and a half minutes to go. So glad you're along with us. Wainwright leading in shots, eight to four, and as we've discovered, Hillman, here we go with Foley down the right side. Around the net, tries to feed it through, and as I was going to say, Hillman, Content to work the counter attack more than anything. They play very tight checking hockey. Don't gamble a great deal. Yeah, Wait for you made mistakes. They did the same thing yesterday as well. I really like the game of uh, both teams right now, actually. Maybe not so much the rough stuff that's been going on, but uh, just a couple of hits, and that stuff happens in hockey. The guys go off balance. But nonetheless, I, I like the defense of the hitman, and I like the way the, the wrestlers are working the puck around. So either way, you know, it, if it stays like this for the rest of the game, I think we're going to have an entertaining hockey. Absolutely. Game. Offside, so the... Draw will come out outside the Hillman zone. There's even, even strength now. Back to even strength, five on five hockey. Thank you, Dave. Jimmy Peterson covers up that puck with Scott McCluskey right on the doorstep. 10.01 to go. Yeah, no, no reason to complain for either team right now. I think Hillman's just want to maintain their, um, keep their legs underneath them with that short bench. And uh, the wrestlers obviously want to get out of here with a bronze medal, right? They wanted to play in gold, but. They're happy to win this one if they can. Of course, last night they lost 5-4 in the semifinal to Daysland, and they staged a an epic comeback. Yeah, it was incredible. Right up until the last moment of that big uh, rebound that uh, was kicked out into the slot that 
Ended up, uh, what, a minute and a half, two minutes left in the game, I think it was. And we thought that game, I thought the game was in the books. <laughs> I'm going to quote you in a second in a mission. You go, this one's not done. It's not done. I said I think they can do it, yeah. and they nearly did yeah. it. But I'll tell you, it was so a heartbreaker. Close. I mean, it was a wonderful game, too. It's fun to watch. Absolutely. And a, and a fantastic tournament uh, throughout. We had a very high-scoring games in our first two games. We had a 9-2 and an 8-6 game, so 25 goals in our first two games. But ever since then, we have had some dynamic plays, some beautiful goals, and we're going to have some more today, of course, as we close out the 2017 AA Senior Men's Provincial Hockey Championships. There's a shot that looked like it went off the shoulder or even off the helmet of one of the wrestlers. Yeah, I think they hit Noble in the head. Here's number four. Oh, that's callback and a quick shot and score. Number 14. Actually, check that. That is Tian Anderson, who has been the offensive catalyst for the Hitman Dave. Yeah, another goal by Tian Anderson. Had two in one game on Saturday afternoon from the right wing side, and that's the same spot that he scored on. Short side, top shelf. Remember that one? Went off the crossbar and in. Tian Anderson, yet again, his fourth goal of the tournament. In his uh, third game, four goals, no assists so far. And Gilmond, surprise, a great angle there. Thank you very much for the camera shot. one nothing for the Hitman. Of course, our expanded ICU video ProCast crew here today in Wainwright. And so glad that our viewers are along with us. Jimmy Peterson loses his footing behind his own net. He scrambles to get back into the cage, and he's just fine. There's another shot and a goal! Number 18, Adam Creasy, the captain, throw the puck on net, see what happens. And I was waiting for the goal to get announced. I was paying attention to the PA system, which hadn't even been called yet. Creasy throws a puck harmlessly at the net. I think Peterson thought that was going to miss. If you remember the Mighty Ducks movie, that's the knuckle puck. Creasy just puts it up there, goes through three bodies, may have even hit the man on the side of the net and uh, deflected in off him. But, again, Peterson just... With the blocker, I'd have thought it was going to miss, and we're all tied up. We'll get another look at that replay, I'm sure, with our intrepid crew. 21 you, seconds after, Kev. Giving you the replays, of course. Thank you, Dave. And the wrestlers answer right back. These two teams, no stranger. Here are the hitmen now. That's Dugan spinning around, playing it back to the blue line. There's a shot almost through traffic. Rebound in front, and there's Dugan in the slot. Here the wrestlers try to break out. There's Mackay down. Here's, down the, here's Anderson down the far boards, and late penalty call here on the hitman. Let's take a look at that replay, Dave, as Anderson had a big head of steam going down the far wing. Yeah, and he got an arm on his chest, which prevented him from getting a good shot away, and difficult when a big body is going down the wing as the defender. It's a really, really hard to not get a hand on him to try and prevent uh, some of his momentum going towards the net as a replay crew will cue that up for us uh, probably at the next whistle here. But nonetheless, another power play for Wainwright. They're 0 for 1 so far. Here are 3 the for 16 in the tournament. On the power play, kept in at the line by Johnson, number 12. He's got the heavy shot for the wrestlers. Two minute penalty on Brew Man, number four of the Hitmen. Hooking is the call. Had a good chat with Brew just before the game and very proud guy. And he says, we've got a proud group. We're under man, but we're going to give it all we've got. A little bit of body contact on that shot. Noble just gets away with that. Here's Johnson, number 12. That has the big point shot. Here's Laporte, number 41. He's got a goal in his last two games. He's got a goal in each game his last two. He was a, an addition to the lineup yesterday. So the puck is frozen at the side of the net with 123 to go in the power play for the wrestlers 746 to go in the first period dave your thoughts so far yeah the uh the, the goals were from anderson with the assist going to uh wayhill as well as creasy gets the goal with the assist going to morgan mckay so we're all tied up 21 seconds apart hitman clear the zone just over a minute to go in the man advantage johnson for the wrestlers content to Get the breakout set up, and he'll play it up to number seven, Ross Herzog. Herzog now will stop. Anderson in front, and a stop by Jimmy Peterson. I'm really impressed 
by Ron, the energy of Ryan Anderson in this bronze medal game, Dave. Yeah, and to answer your previous question, I'm not surprised with the flow of the game so far with the two teams that know each other very well, with uh, they're able to get some shots on goal. There's a little bit of parity. Jimmy P's up to the test right now, though. And he is going to have to stand tall when you deal with, when you have seven regulars out of the lineup, you're going to lean on your goaltender yeah. just a little bit, whether you want to or not. He's nowhere near as busy as Paralau was at the, uh, the beginning of the game yesterday, but he still put on a good show. Here we go now, Rustlers. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Here's Leggett, number five. He throws a shot, and that nearly caroms in back out to the line to Gosselin. Gosselin with the shot. Can't get through, and Sean Newman, number five. Puck takes a strange, strange bounce. Where did it go? I that can't, still I was, hasn't found it. I was going to say, Dave, help me out yeah. here because that thing is somewhere near Bruce. Yeah, I don't know if that looks like it took a weird bounce off of the, uh, the stanchion and then kind of flew up either in the bench <laughs> or into the stands. I'm not, we're not, still not sure where that yeah. one went. Yeah, it's like the, the case of the missing puck, like the 1994 Stanley Cup Finals where That's the right. one that uh, – Courtney shot, and nobody knew if that went through the net or not. But Face off to the right of Jimmy Peterson with 20 seconds to go in this power play. Hitman trying to clear, and there's a, well, there's a little floater by McCluskey, and it's one of their, you talked about the knuckleball. That was a knuckleball. Case of the missing puck, even more. Another one to that. When Patrick Kane scored the overtime winner, and the puck got lost in the net. That's a better description. But There we go. Right off the draw. Yeah, there's uh, Peterson showing the quick glove, and he's right in position. He's locked in. And, and there's, there's another puck that goes out of play. Right into the Hillman bench has the uh, entire bench ducking on that one. 6.36 to go here in the bronze medal game. Kevin Donnan along with Dave Dawson and our entire ICU Video Productions ProCast crew where we have four cameras and we've had wall-to-wall -wall coverage all weekend, but now we bring you our full, our full production crew for the bronze and gold medal games here in Wainwright. And of course, we want to throw out some kudos to our hosts here in Wainwright who have been absolutely hospitable and fantastic, Dave. Yeah, it's been a great, great weekend to be a part of. And uh, Noble, just on that turnaround pass, threw that through the neutral zone. Might have had an on-man opportunity if he was paying attention. Tapped ahead into the hitman zone. Peterson plays the puck behind his own net. It's played out onto the half wall, cross ice pass. That's number three, Politeski, ahead for callback. And it's played into the hitman zone. No icing, icing waved off. And here's Costa, number 13, battling in the corner. He wins the puck, plays it out to Mackay. Mackay now feeds it down behind, the, behind Jimmy Peterson and a nice little Set play there by the Rustlers, and we're back to five on five, of course. 5.28 to go with the Rustlers and Hitman tied at one. It's a really minor detail, but I think that if the Hitman get into danger and they just ice the puck today, that's the best way to go. Don't get in that yard sale. Don't get in the breakneck speed. Don't get in the traffic jam, anything like that with the Rustlers. Just slow it down, and I think they're going to be able to weather the storm. Keep things simple in when you mm -hmm. in a case when, like I say, we we talked about how undermanned the Hillman team is. So you've got to kind of take things down to a very base level, if you will. On the Wainwright side, turn it up, make them work for it, grind them down, get it down low, wear that those defense down, work the puck around and make them puck watch. I think Wainwright's so talented. We've seen all year long on the goals for goals against 182 to 150 uh, to 55. That's the greatest variation of this entire tournament. They can put pucks in the net, wear them down, and grind them. Absolutely. Start, and, and of, of course, start taking the body for, uh, on the hitmen, and you can wear them out on an undermanned team. But now, here come the hitmen, two on one, and it is called on the offside yeah. very close. But T and Anderson will get the replay on that, and he just stepped over the blue line, yeah, Dave. Great call on the line there. Just half a stride right there oh. is the step. So he just missed the puck, and... Great call on the lines there, as you often said yesterday. The lines people don't get talked about much, but a good job on the call. Tian Anderson on the draw for the hitman. Leading scorer, Anthony Renier, out there on the on right wing. 30 points the in the regular now. season. 15 and 15. Played behind the net now, the hitman. Bronze medal game tied at one here with 4.41 to go. And... And Dave, right now, the hitmen, you've got to be pretty happy in this first period how you've come out, given 
the fact that, I mean, they've had an extended rest, but at the same time, uh, I'm impressed with the way they've come out. And I'd be curious to see how much more momentum they would have had had the knuckle puck beat, not beat Jimmy Peterson if it was one nothing, but had 1-1, one, one, yeah. I'm really impressed with how they made the game simple so far. You've got to feel good if you're, if you're a Hillman fan this afternoon. And there's a loose puck out in front. Shot by Crookshank. Score! Number 26, Brad Crookshank. And feel good about that one as Johnny on the spot right in the slot. Puck just dropped right on his stick as this first save was made by Goodwin. And you see on the replay here, Goslin and Leggett Gives the puck away. That's probably the 15th giveaway from Leggett in this tournament. Right there for Crookshank. High blocker right underneath the bar. And it's 2-1 for the Hillmond Hitman here in the closing moments of the opening period. Crookshank did not take the warm-up. Here's the official word. And here we go now. Here's the Hitman on the attack now. Here's Jordy Dugan, always dangerous, but a nice defensive play just inside the blue line. And Kyle Tenney now, number 21, tries to lift it into the Rustler zone, but they'll clear. Tenney and Dugan drew the assists on that goal by Peterson. It's number three, Paul Oteski. He'll play it Crookshank, over. Crookshank, pardon me. Goal by Crookshank. There's Tenney, number 21, looking for Crookshank, and why not? Crookshank, of course, did not take the warm-up. Dave, and we were concerned about that because he is one of those offensive catalysts for Hillman. Yeah, only six games played in the regular season for uh, Brad Crookshank. Five goals, three assists, a bit of a late addition there. But uh, he's been not only a, a physical leader, but he's been able to establish the leadership with his offensive output. Had a fantastic tournament, too. McCluskey now. Here's Woodward, number 77, and it's cleared. By Miazga, number 16. Rustlers play it in now. And a little bit of back and forth here. Miazga can't get out of the way. And there's a long lead pass for number 11, Priest, who also didn't take the, uh, the uh, <laughs> I don't know if these guys are just showing up or yeah, what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's They're Priest just trying who didn't to show us take up. it. That's, I think so. Or maybe they, uh, you know, maybe they missed the wake up call or yeah, something. But Pri Priest resurrected late. <laughs> Now there's a line. There we go. Yeah, I like this. Hillmont's got something to play for. Wainwright, I know it must hurt. Absolutely. After that game yesterday, giving up that late goal to Nant or to Day's line, you figure, oh, I gotta play in the bronze medal game. Half the town is in St. Paul to watch the junior B team play. <laughs> but you know what? You still got something on the line today. And there's the big contact from Priest. But um if you're the Wainwright wrestlers, be proud. You can play for bronze. You can win this game. It's 2-1. It's early, and your rivalry here, I'm, I think it far, far, far from over. So it's a matter for the wrestlers to try and stay patient. Here's a long lead pass to Chopek, and he just misses it. Peterson will play it back. Yeah, good stretch from Leggett, who we've talked about at times, his irresponsibility in his own zone, but he had a good stretch pass there. Peterson loses his footing again behind his own goal. Chopek now takes a bump from Crookshank. Here's Pacharka. He'll dump it in with just over two minutes to go in this opening period. A very entertaining first period here in the bronze medal game of the 2017 Alberta Senior Men's AA Provincials. Here we go now. Hitmen two on two. That's Tenney joining the rush. Defensive play by the wrestlers will break that up. Here's Politeski now. He'll play it back for the captain. Sean Newman, number five. Over to Tenney here on the near boards. He'll send it into the corner. It gets sent around. Here's Anderson, number 47, who's had a strong first period for the Rustlers. Played through the neutral zone, and here's Newman. And that pass is cut off. Here comes Marchand. Three on two for Wainwright. Here's Anderson, number 47, cross ice, but that is picked away by the hitman. Good stick by Danny Wheeler on that one. Here we go with a shot inside the circle. That's Crookshank again, and he is ever dangerous when he gets inside the circle. I thought I saw number eight, excuse me, that was Brew Man on the pick there. But um, it's a small detail, Kev, yep. and I, I honestly think, though, but maybe what Hillmond was trying to do is show Wainwright we're undermanned, we're missing all these guys. They don't know what's going on, so they take the warm-up going, oh, you're down seven bodies? We're going to knock you out. Then they come out with a full lineup, and maybe they just uh, 
mess with him psychologically <laughs> just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of gamesmanship I here. Was just, the, there you go. I knew Mr. Donna would have that word for me. A little bit of Saskal to gamesmanship here. Why not? These two rivalry, these two rivals, of course, have met six times already this season. And Hillman has yet to come away with a victory, but in a bronze medal game, anything can happen. Here we go now, Rustlers. Another great play by Brew Man mm. to clear the slot. He's been excellent with the stick today, excellent in his own zone. Outstanding so far. Here's Noble, he'll wait, play it back. Wisely play it back to Politeski. Callback number 24, now he'll feed it to Anderson, number 14. He's dangerous if you give him room. And Goodwin slides over to make the save. 24 seconds to go here in the opening period. And if you want to talk about Hillman in terms of they've had the extra rest as well. Wainwright played late last night, even though they're under man. But let's take another look at this one, Dave. Now here's that. Anderson loves that top of the circle shot. He likes to come it in from the left side, skate across, and try to draw the goal. Here's a shot just over the loose puck, just over the crossbar. That's number nine, Anthony Renier, the leading scorer for the hitmen. Politeski now. Ten seconds to go in the opening period. Of course, we'll have Jamie Salm of Hockey Alberta as our between periods guest. Dave will have a chat with him. Two seconds to go here in the opening period. And Dave, give us your thoughts about the, this opening period. Yeah, very successful opening period if you're a Hillmon fan and they're the home team today in this rink. If you're a Wainwright fan, I think that maybe you just come in thinking we're just going to roll over this. We're just going to win bronze. But they'll come into the intermission and they'll, uh, they'll turn things around. And it's a matter of Wainwright being patient at this point when you're dealing with a squad that's missing a few regulars and your score at the end of the first period, the Hillmond Hitman 2-1 to one over the tournament host Wainwright Rustlers here in this bronze medal contest at the 2017 Senior Men's AA Provincial Hockey Championships. And a very pleasant afternoon from the Wainwright Peace Memorial Multiplex. I'm Kevin Donnan, along with my broadcast partner, Dave Dawson. And Dave, this is the uh, this is the time of the tournament where both teams need to dig deep. You've, it's been a busy weekend. There's been a lot of hockey. The bumps and bruises are there, but uh, one team has to step forward and just want it that much more. Yeah, game number one was five o'clock on Friday between Daysland and Hillmond, and there's been. Six, this is the sixth game already since Friday at 5 o'clock. So a lot of fruit has been consumed. A lot of other beverages have been consumed. A lot of sleep. And you just got to be able to psychologically, as we talked yesterday, be able to stay focused, not make those mental mistakes. I think right. physically your body's probably used to being beat up by now. It's about making those mental mistakes. Because when you're, as the saying you said yesterday, your body's the first one to go, then your mind or whatever. Whatever it was you said. You're too Let good. the body control the mind, not the, and vice versa. You yeah. bet. However you're, you're that smart goes. Guy. I'm just that, however that goes. But you know, it's all about endurance now and, and digging deep. So the score at the end of the first period in this bronze medal game, 2-1 for the Hillmond hit, Hitmen. And we'll be back in just a few moments with our special guest, Jamie Salm of Hockey Alberta. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Peace Memorial Multiplex in Wainwright, Alberta. This beautiful facility for the Senior AA Men's Provincial Hockey Championships. And I'm joined here by Jamie Som, the Senior Director, I believe that's the title, of yeah. Hockey Alberta. Uh, Jamie, first of all, what's it been like to just, uh, take part in this tournament here? Oh, this has been a great tournament. Uh, you know, top-notch right from the get-go. Uh, I love the, this whole camera thing. It's, uh, I've heard a lot of great comments from uh, grandmas and grandpas across the province. And... Uh, no, it's just, uh, you know, they have the lounge up here. They have the 50-50, some of the biggest jackpots I've ever seen at a, a senior event. So, no, it's just been really excellent. Now, on, let's maybe expand on that level that uh, there, I don't think, when people think of maybe hockey uh, games to go to, they think about the, the Oilers, they think about maybe even the Western Hockey League. What does that mean 
for Hockey Alberta and some of the ranks of the Junior Bs and the Seniors just to have the kind of involvement and the kind of coverage that there is? Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, the, the caliber of players out here on this ice, uh, you know, they have all walks of life. You have your people who are just uh, right out of midget hockey. Uh, you have your Junior Bs, your Junior As. You've had guys playing semi-pro, pro league. I mean, it's just uh, a great mix of players to have uh, come out and play at this level and in this kind of tournament. So uh, I think it's top notch. Yeah, and maybe sometimes often under noticed are the senior ranks, right? Because in Hockey Alberta, you get the Junior A and the Junior B is a little bit more of the credibility because yep. the RBC yep. Cup. But uh, what's, what's that like, the senior double A level? Because you're looking through some of the, the pedigree of some of the players going, those guys have played pro hockey, there's guys in the Western League. You know, what's that like to be able to have this kind of exposure for that? Um, you know, I think everybody who's played at a competitive level, like the WHL, uh, they come out of there and they come to this level. To them, that's a, uh, you know, it's not the, the it's kind of like the NHL to them, I would say. Um, it's the highest level they feel comfortable playing competitively. Um, and, you know, to play for the, uh, the provincial title is, is like their Stanley Cup, so... Um, I do, like, I want to put a little note out here. What's senior hockey in Alberta? Um, one of my goals is to try and grow the game of senior hockey. Uh, I want this level to be more noticed. I want even the, you know, there's a caliber below AA, uh, the Sask Elta League uh, over in, you know, uh, Consort, Huend and Irma. They play at a lower level than this, but I want them to be able to play for a championship too. Um, they're just, they have great teams, great fans, but they, uh, they're just, uh, you know, just a one notch below this level of hockey. So, um, yeah, I'd love to grow this game. Okay, we'll expand on that too. Maybe for first time viewers, they might think senior hockey, well, that's Allen Cup national level. That's mm -hmm. senior AAA. So mm -hmm. if you can maybe just expand on the differences uh, between the senior AAA and kind of how senior AA and A have kind of emerged from that. Okay. Well, senior AAA, of course, is the, uh, we have one league in Alberta. It's the Chinook Hockey League. And, uh, we have Stony Plain Eagles, uh, Lacombe Generals, Port Saskatchewan uh, uh, Chiefs, and Innisfail Eagles. So uh, four teams that represent basically uh, these are players that I think uh, there isn't a roster in that league that I think the lowest level is WHL pretty much. So these guys have all played minimum WHL, uh, semi-pro, pro, uh, over in Europe. So... Uh, that's where you get the, the difference in edge between uh, AAA and senior AA. Uh, because AA, you have that mixture of uh, grassroots hockey kids, the junior Bs, junior As, but you don't quite have that uh, high caliber like the WHL and, and higher. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's the difference between the two. And then, like talking about the A division, that's your, your farm boys and the guys who grew up together playing midgets and you know, coming out of their minor hockey associations, so. Yeah, and, and I think that it would, I, I love the idea that you said to give them a championship to play for, because you look at the Junior B's, junior B level, they have um, the Keystone Cup, they have the Russ Barnes Trophy, right? And, and for here, I think that, where do you see that Senior A level and the Senior AA level going in the next couple of years? For a national championship, maybe? Uh, you know, it's been talked about, but uh, I think that'll be shut down um, pretty quickly, just for the simple fact of economics. Uh, these teams struggle as it is just to make it through a season lately with the, the downturn in the economy and sponsorship. So, you know, to, you know, we'd really have to do some planning for, uh, to get some grants or some kind of money for these teams to go out and compete at a national level. So, um, yeah, it's going to be tough, but I think we'll grow the game in Alberta and then, uh, you know, make it popular again, get fans coming out to support it. Then these teams will make money again and be able to buy for a, you know, a Western or a national championship. Sure. So why don't we bring it back close at home? Why Wainwright? Why was Wainwright a good choice for the senior AA uh, championships here? Uh, well, Wainwright, uh, so how this works for uh, hosting this tournament, um, each league has a rotation. Uh, and it just happened to be the Sask Elta's turn to host. Um, and I think Wainwright was uh, the only team that, put the bid in this year but look at this facility it's top notch uh, great so there wasn't a better choice to have it than here in Wainwright so absolutely and 
from what I'm understanding, from what I'm hearing from some of the talk, that it's such a hockey culture here when it comes to juniors, to seniors, the feeder system, the, you have to play here for a couple years and live here in order to play for the team. What does that say about just the, the pedigree of the community for hockey? It's a great hockey community, Wainwright. Uh, you hear lots of stories. You know, they have the, uh, the Polar Kings, I believe they're called. It's their local club team here. So I think all the kids starting out in, uh, you know, shavers going up through novice in the ranks, I think that's their goal is to play for the Polar Kings and then, you know, move up. I mean, I, I know some kids who that's, their dream is to play for the Rustlers, right, or the, the Bisons. So that's their NHL. And a, bit of, and a bit of a divided town today with mm. the Bisons of the Provincial Championships yeah, in St. Paul. That's something else. I, I feel bad that the two schedules are conflicting, but probably taking away from some of the, the fan uh, fans showing up here today. So, But good luck to them over there. I, I hope they can pull it off. For sure. Uh, Jamie, any, any final thoughts and comments, I guess, just about Hockey Alberta, uh, the direction of the future and kind of where things are going, maybe for this level or beyond? Um, I just want to mention that Hockey Alberta is uh, currently looking at aligning all the leagues in the province uh, to kind of follow under the same guidelines, same bylaws and uh, rules so that just so that we're all doing the same thing and going in the same direction. Um, so that's one thing. It's uh, the prototype, I think, is called Alberta One. And they're starting at minor hockey uh, and then they're going to work up slowly through the different levels. So uh, that's what's focusing uh, down in Red Deer right now. Okay, when are we going to see that kind of unfold and a little bit more of that? I think you'll see it in minor hockey uh, in the next year or two, but uh, for senior, uh, it could be two to three years away yet. But Okay, yeah. good stuff. Well, thanks so much for your time, yeah. Jamie, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the yeah. weekend here. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, you guys. All right, Jamie Saw, the uh, Senior Director of Hockey Alberta here at the 2017 Senior AA Provincial Championships in Wainwright. We'll be back with more from Wainwright in the second period after this.
Welcome back to the 2017 AA Provincial Men's Hockey Championships bronze medal game between the Hillman Hitmen and the tournament host Wayne Wright Rustlers. The Hitmen enjoy a 2-1 lead going into this second period. And I'm Kevin Donnell along with my broadcast partner Dave Dawson in what was a very entertaining first period. And why don't you walk us through some pretty good highlights. Yeah, a couple of uh, a surprise if you're a first-time observer of this tournament maybe and you're just tuning in. But here's Anderson's goal. Short side, top shelf, that's a guy to go in a 10-34. Good angle from that and our side cam there. The assist on that going to Jared Wayhill. And then the wrestlers battle right back. 21 seconds later, an awkward shot that looked like handcuff goaltender Jimmy P, who waved his arms. And uh, looks like that was deflected on the side of that. I wonder if Goodwin's going to get credited for that on the change. And then here's the giveaway behind the net on the cycle. Maybe Leggett was looking for some support, but Dugan right out in front. And Johnny on the spot, Crookshank, the beneficiary, and Goodwin. You can see his frustration, or uh, excuse me, the goaltender. The, you can see the frustration coming out of him, Goodwin, for his defense that he was looking at. Uh, the Gosselin, not Goodwin, Gosselin, and Leggett, who looked like they miscommunicated there. So that's where we stand, Kev, 2-1 to one after 20. And, of course, we talked earlier in the broadcast about the Hillman Hitmen and how they had seven regulars out of the lineup, two Members of the Hitman squad, Crookshank and Priest, were game time decisions and a great decision for Crookshank as he has given the Hitman the lead here going into this bronze medal game. And what do you expect, Dave, going into this second period? Yeah, I like the way you drew it up there. You said gamesmanship and Ken Rutherford, a guarantee the coach of Hillman, that's what he was thinking. And keeping it simple again, Kev, I think if you ice it when you get into some pressure, you know, don't worry about that. Flip it over the glass, let the goalie cover it, slow it down. If you're the Wainwright Rustlers, you want to go, you want to turn this thing up. You want to go lightning fast, two on ones, three on ones, long lead passes, tire out the defense, tire out the forwards, get this game out of hand by the end of the second period. I think if you're Wainwright, you want it five, six, seven, two by the end of the second. And it's your last game of the season. The equipment gets put away for a few months. <laughs> Out come the golf clubs, yep. hopefully. Yep. You know, in, in, in Alberta, we never know in the springtime when the clubs exactly come out. But uh, this is your last action until September, so you've got to lay it all on the line. Yep. Sixth game between these two teams this season, so. In the neutral zone now, just in front of the Rustler bench. Glad you're along with us on this ICU video procast, our entire Broadcast crew here today, four cameras, and great, great coverage. Here's Renier now. He'll draw a little drop pass and a give and go to the leading scorer, the hitman, and Goodwin rather calmly with that puck right on the goal line. And there's a long lead pass. Here's the captain, Creasy. He'll load up, but a nice defensive play by Renier on the back check. This is some of the best hockey I've seen Renier play this tournament. Sound in both ends. There's a big shot by the leading scorer, number nine, and what a shift for Anthony Renier, Dave. Yeah, 15 goals, 15 assists in the regular season. The team leader with power play goals as well. And really sound defensive play in his own zone. You see the two-on-two -two pass, and just a simple shot on net, but you never know what a goaltender's gonna do if it hits a stick, if it might bobble off his glove. So a sound play by Renier. Face off to the left of the goalkeeper, Nolan Goodwin. One, the draw won by Wainwright, and it is cleared down on the icing call. And, of course, Dave, we're broadcasting all over the world, we hope. Yeah. We're on the Internet, but I've got a shout-out. In between periods, while you were conducting that interview with Jamie Somm, and we want to thank him and uh, want to congratulate you on a fantastic interview with Jamie, but got to throw a shout-out. We've got some Rustler fans out there on the Internet, and they've, they've asked for a shout-out, so let's throw a, a big shout-out to the Rustler fans B. Bras, who were following the action, they sent us a message and said, give us a shout out and go Rustlers. So right. we'll, we'll give them that plug because they, the town of Wainwright has been so hospitable. Speaking of the Rustlers, in on goal and a shot score! Wow. Number 41, Nick Laporte. Three goals in as many games, Dave. Yeah, right up top shelf. Beautifully put puck. Only a buck 15 into this period, and that's the start that we talked about that the wrestlers wanted. A pass off the boards, a nice little cycle play, and a good stick check by the defender. Laporte puts it way upstairs as Jimmy P went down early. If we can get another look at that on a wider cam, I'd like to see who the defender was that let that one by. Great individual effort by Nick Laporte, who's been a great addition to this wrestler lineup. And there he is again with another shot that deflected off into the net. 
We'll get another look at this. I want to see who that Hillman defender was that uh, had that puck pickpocketed from his uh, right on the blue line there whenever we get a chance. Thanks, guys, for queuing that up. Yeah, and there's uh, another look at that Laporte goal. If we can back that up, if that's possible, no problem. But uh, just curious to see who that defender was of the blue line. Nonetheless, a great play by Laporte, not taking anything away from him as it's tied at two. Woodward tries to turn and fire. I believe that was Sean Newman, the captain, who was caught a little bit flat-footed, but a great individual effort there by Nick Laporte. Don't see that often. Newman's had an outstanding tournament. Early moments of this second period here in the bronze medal game. 2-2 tie now as Wainwright was down by a goal. Coming into this second period, now two on two for the Hitmen. They're content to dump it in. That's Noble giving chase number seven. He gets to the puck, tries to center it out front. Karam's back behind the goal, and now the Rustlers will break out. Look for that long lead pass. Here's number 13, Costa. One on one on the outside. Tries to go inside, outside. Puck now in the corner. There's a big hit in the corner and a penalty call. It's a questionable call, in my opinion. That's borderline. That is coming to the Hitmen. So now. Man advantage here for the Rustlers on the late penalty. Hitman going to have to try and get a, a touch on this puck to get the whistle. Got the extra man on the ice already. And here we go, and the, and the play is blown dead. Yeah, we'll have a look at the penalty here. I get the referee's idea by the player had his back to him. We've seen a lot of that in this tournament, but looked like that he braced himself for that contact. But again, the referee's got a better view than we do. We're just up here, but... Let's get another look at this penalty. Yeah, braced him. He kind of used both hands to massage him into the glass, and I get it if you're pushing and you're letting him fly. I'm a broadcaster, you're a ref. You're getting paid to do your job. But in my opinion, <laughs> that, that, that call in, in this caliber of game at 2-2, you gonna let that one pass. And I used it in the first game, and I'll use it again. Tim Priest of the Hitmen going to the confessional for two minutes. Nicely done. 17 minutes to go here. The sin bin. The sin bin, yes. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. 17 minutes to go. Inside the circle now, big shot. Right on. And Jimmy Peterson and Creasy tap sticks and let each other know how, how excited they are for the bronze medal game. Yeah, on the other side of this, great, uh, great job, Wayne Wright, just maintaining their composure. The wrestlers, three for 17 in the power play in this tournament so far. And the... Uh, Actually, the Hitmen have a really potent penalty kill at 11 for 12. So if you're Wainwright, you're in a great spot to just make him pay. Face off to the left of Jimmy Peterson now. 1.30 to go in the power play for the Rustlers. Mackay now at the blue line. He'll look. Play it over on the half wall there to McNabb at the top of the circle. He tries to go cross ice. And it's broken up by number 21. Kyle Tenney, and he'll send it down the ice. Tenney's quietly had a good tournament as well. We've talked a lot about some of the other guys, the Dugans and the Crookshanks and the Newmans, but I've liked Tenney's game so far. Tenney has had an outstanding tournament, as has Creasy here. Creasy has done a lot of good work just outside the circle and takes a shot, and that's easily handled by Jimmy Peterson. And uh, let's take another look at this one. Yeah, there are goaltenders that fight for pucks, and there's goaltenders that get in position and make saves. Jimmy Peterson made that save. He didn't have to panic. He didn't have to fight through. He knew exactly where it was going, right in the glove, and stopped it. Exactly one minute to go here in the power play. Played back out to Leggett, number five. He'll look, send it over to McMahon. Now cross ice for Spencer Gosselin. Gosselin down into the corner or on the half wall to Laporte. He's got the tying goal, and they're looking for him again, and why not? He is absolutely lethal in the slot. Gosselin now. And that is blockered aside by Jimmy Peterson. The one great thing Hillmont's doing right now and able to, aside from stay in this game, but be have an impact in this game is their defense. Between Newman, Politeski, every one of those guys playing sound defensively, good sticks. Just throw it away if you're in a compromising position. Here's Leggett now, number five. Over to Gosselin. Gosselin will feed it down on the half wall to Laporte, number 41. Cross ice, oh, big save! Jimmy Peterson gets the left pad, but Hitman can't clear. Here's Leggett now in the circle out front for Laporte, oh! and a robbery by Jimmy Peterson standing tall. They set that back door up. The first save on Brad McNabb, the tournament leading point getter, 
And then the second save was even more impressive. Jimmy Peterson is keeping the hitman in this. Hitman with the big hit behind the goal, and the wrestlers will break out. Back to five on five now. That's Brew Man. He's had a good tournament on the blue line for the hitman. And there's a bouncing puck, and Peterson thought he lost that one, but he covers up. Brad McNabb right on the doorstep. Yeah, between Polteski, Brew Man, and Newman. Let's take a look at these saves, oh, Dave. Oh, man. Oh, this is, this is a thing of beauty right here. That's the kind of puck that's going to go in, right? Like that's, if you're in Laporte, you've popped him in already. You got one this game. You think he's down on his back. I can put it five hole, can put it beside his pad top shelf. Nope. Jimmy P goes, eh, uh eh. -uh. Keeping it 2 2. And they're going to need Jimmy Peterson if they are going to get that bronze medal. It is 2 2 now with just over 14 minutes to go here in the second period. 2 2 score. Glad you're along with us on this ICU Video Productions Procast of the bronze medal game of the Alberta Provincial Senior Men's AA Hockey Championships. Want to throw out some shout outs if we can to our sponsors, ACAM Club Mojos. That place was hot and happening last <laughs> night. Meat Co. Cutting Edge Ventures, Don Isseman Professional Corporation, Hall and Company, Crop Production Services, Olson's Construction, and we'll mention a few more as well. 14 and a half minutes to go here, or five and a half expired in this highly entertaining bronze medal game. Back out to the point. There's a big shot from the point by number 55 Foley. Now two on one for the hitman. Here's callback with Renier. Renier back, and they can't convert. Hitman that close to taking the lead. Right on the doorstep, hitman score! Tian Anderson missed that first one. He passed it back to Renier. He wasn't expecting it. And Anderson on the doorstep, another goal, his second of the game, fifth of the tournament. T and Anderson is setting this thing on fire. Yeah, there's that return pass. Anderson wasn't expecting it. Then it goes behind the net for Renier, tries to center it. Takes the bump there as we get on the side of the net. And Anderson all alone, wide open net, pops it in. It's 3-2 Hitman. Hitman catch the rustlers scrambling on defense there a little bit. And Tian Anderson, who's a one-man scoring machine for the Hitmen in this tournament. He has scored some highlight reel goals. And here come the Hitmen again. They've got a one-goal lead in a game that we didn't anticipate. We thought the Rustlers would come out and take advantage of this Hillman team who are undermanned a bit. They're, they're missing some regulars through injuries and other commitments through the tournament. But... Right now, that Hillman team playing with a lot of pride, Dave. Well, here's two things they're doing very well. They're keeping the shots outside the perimeter for the wrestlers. They can't get anything. The interior, they're limiting second chance opportunities. So on top of the great goaltending from Peterson, if you get offensive opportunities, you have the confidence to be able to create chances just like that one and capitalize because you know when it's going to come to the other side, you have the goaltending and you have the defense. So we get another look at that pass from the corner. It's Joe Peck. Had it, and oh yeah, there's the oh, hit, a rather. Big hit. That's huge contact, but if you're Wainwright, it's okay. Continue to find ways to penetrate that defense, because right now you can't get to the front of the net. Outstanding job by the Hillman Blue Line in this tournament. Tipped it into the Hillman zone. That's Jimmy Peterson handling the puck. Can't clear. Now the Rustlers. Looking for a centering pass. Plays it over into the corner. That's Creasy, the captain. Down to Anderson, number 47. Good cycle here for the Rustlers, Dave. Outstanding defensive positioning again. No Rustler player can get to the front of the net. The crease is wide open, and we've seen games past that players have been able to find their way through there, but no player can get through. The Rustlers need to get a guy in front if they're going to get some offensive opportunities, but don't give up on that. Keep cycling and keep wearing them down. Here's Jordy Dugan, number 22, who's had a quiet game so far, but if he gets going, look out. Absolutely, and Dugan's been the heart and soul of his team for most of the weekend as he get another look at that goal and the pass across. And the wide cam here is, yeah, Renier from behind the net centers it. And it just scoots loose to Anderson and makes no mistake again. The quick hand eye with Anderson puts a top shelf. Anderson left alone at the side of the net there. And he makes no mistake. Rustlers break out now. There's Nick Laporte. He has the Rustlers' second goal. And the Hitman now through the neutral zone. There's nearly a big collision between Foley 
And Anderson, number 14, here's Herzog, number seven. He'll stop, look for the McNabb. There's a shot on goal, steered aside by Peterson. And again, rebound cleared away right away. No second chance opportunity. And guess who? Number 14, Tian Anderson. <laughs> Ooh, just, just out of his reach, or he could have kept that play alive. I, Brad McNabb has been invisible ever since that first, early in the first period. And they got to get that line going again. McNabb, McCann, all those big guns cycling. You we're not hearing those names. No, we're not. Actually, Brad McNabb has had a very quiet bronze medal game here. Here's Johnson. Thought about taking that big shot. But he dumps it into the corner, and now the Hillman hitmen try to wheel around, and it's played back. I would all, you know, what? I didn't think that was icing. I thought that yeah. was that did not look like an icing yeah. to me. But, <laughs> but as you said, they're on the ice. We're up here, and sweep, we're sweep, hurry, 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 hurry. We watched hurry. a little bit of that this morning too. Yeah, yeah. If I'm Dave Leggett, I would almost be considering taking my timeout pretty soon, right? Because what do you got to Good lose? Call. You're not getting any pucks towards the front of the net. Hillman is dominating defensively, and this is a great chance to be able to grind them down, set something up positionally, and be able to score. Here we go with the Rustlers now. As you say, struggling to get shot. Well, they're getting shots, but they're all from the perimeter, and they're all from 30 and 40 feet away. So making life easy on the Hillman goaltender, Jimmy Peterson. Now, Hillman now. Play kept into the zone, but the Rustlers gather up the loose puck. Try that long lead pass to McCluskey. It won't go, and back on icing. So here we are with 8.47 expired here in the second period. The shots are 23 for the Hillman Hitmen, only, oh, pardon me, 23 for the Rustlers, 14 for the Hillman Hitmen. Dave? Give us your thoughts half, nearly halfway through this second yeah, period. I think it's a great chance for the wrestlers. They win a draw, get a big point shot, Chad Johnson, get a goal. They're, they're that quick to getting back into it, right? So they don't have to hang their, not hang their heads, but they're getting dominated in the O zone right now. But if they get a good point shot from Johnson, they're that quick. Here we go. Nice, beautiful open ice pass to Jordy Dugan. Here's Crookshank on the follow-up. Big rebound, but it's gathered up by the wrestlers. That was a dangerous rebound. Yeah, cleared out of harm's way. There's the announcement of the Junior B score. Update from St. Paul with the Wainwright Junior B Bisons up 1-0 in their championship game. And as we mentioned, we've got a, you know, half the town is in St. Paul, and it's <laughs> uh, this is the hotbed of hockey right here in Alberta. Renier, nice move at the blue line. Battle for the puck here on the half wall. He tries to center it, and now the rustlers break out. Here's Anderson with a big watch. His speed, number 47 down the near boards. Peterson now wisely out of his net. Plays that out of harm's way, and now the hitmen will break up. End-to-end -end action here, Dave. A simple stick by Newman is all it took to take that puck off Anderson. Great stick. Anderson, I want to see him be more aggressive and take that to the net. And right now, the I think you could give the... Uh, most valuable player of the game trophy or, or the awards, you could just give it to the Hillman Blue Line. Oh, they've been unbelievable. unbelievable. Every member of that Blue Line deserves a an honorable mention for yeah, sure. Some accolades. Absolutely. Here we go now. Anderson looking for Marshawn, but he'll cycle it down low. Oh, right out in front. Right in on goal. And a, and a big goal here by Adam Creasy, number 18. The wrestlers answer back. Yeah. We talked about trying to penetrate the defense, and Adam Creasy does it. Yeah, finds a Creasy, and it's a big one. Wide open on the side, and Anderson brings it down low. That's Marshawn waiting in the crease. Fires it through. Nobody picks up the captain, Creasy. And that is, yeah, on the back side, Tian Anderson, who got pu caught puck watching, sitting there just staring at Creasy, who slides it past a sprawling Peterson. Back to a tie game here. 9.30 to go here in this highly entertaining bronze medal game between the Rustlers and the Hillman Hitmen. Here's Gosselad joining the rush. There's a big hit. That's Nick Laporte driven into the end boards, and he is very slow to get up. But here come the hitmen. Two on one. Over to Priest. Priest now in on goal. Back. Return pass. Can't go. Politeski tries to throw it on net. And here's a shot in on goal. Score! Number 11 
A goal from the heavens by Tim Priest. And the Wainwright Rustlers are going to be upset because Nick Laporte was tripped up by goaltender Jimmy Peterson and pushed into the end boards. But all alone in front, nobody picks up Priest. All puck watching in the corner. A very, very frustrating play. 36 seconds after the goal is scored by Creasy to tie it up. Priest puts them up 4-3, to three, but on the other end, Laporte spilled hard in the end boards because Peterson stuck his stick out and tripped him, and there was no call. When, we talk, when I spoke with Brew Mann earlier today, before this game, he said, there's no tomorrow. We're just going to go and do this. And right now, the Hillman hitmen are back at it here. Two on one, tries to find Dugan. Now a soft backhand, you know, and here's a big shot from inside the circle. That's blocked by Woodward, and he is shaken up on that play. He took that shot right up, it appears right off the shoulder, kept in. Mm. Crookshank, that was it's close. A, that's, a, that's a close call on the lines, yep. Right on the, yep. right yeah, on the yep. blue line, and there's, take a look at uh, number 77, Cody Woodward shaking he up. Took that right in the midsection. He got everything, and Woodward wasn't even, he wasn't even trying to block it. He was just trying to get out of the way. He's standing in the crease going, I gotta pick up my check, and he took that right in the rib cage. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts. Right in the ribs. Owie. There's Anderson, number 14. And here we go. Chopek, number 16. He fires a shot right into the belly of Jimmy Peterson. 8.14 to go in the second period. Guys, if we can get another look at that uh, Laporte trip into the end boards when you get a sec. I know it's a little further back, but I'd love to see that again. That's where that goal started on. That uh, trip in the corner, Laporte ended up being caught back in the play and had to go to the bench. And then on the other end, that's when the odd man rush uh, was created for Gilmond. Laporte went into the end boards rather heavily. We'll check his status going forward. Dumped into the corner now. Lead pass up for Renier. Two on one for the hitman. Here's Renier firing. And Nolan Goodwin with a big save. He tried to go five hole on the Rustler goaltender. Renier looking to the heavens there. He didn't want to put that puck right in the midsection. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not the spot he wanted to put. A great look here on the two on one. Thanks for queuing this up, guys. The fake shot right across. But uh, anyway, yeah. The Rainier was, uh, he, right away he looked up to the heavens and thought, I should have put that far pad. Face off just to the left of Goodwin. The draw is won by the Rustlers. They dump the puck out. And that's the captain, Sean Newman. He's behind his own goal. Tries to dump it out, kept in, but the Rustler player loses it at the blue line. And you have to be impressed by the energy of Hillman. I want to see more from Wainwright. This is a bronze medal. You still get to finish third in a tournament. Two on two, Anderson with Creasy. Saucer pass. What a great shot by Creasy. Great hand-eye coordination. Yep. Paul now went out of the air. This is going to be a yard sale the rest of the game, Kev. I feel like it's going to be hits and like Ooh, that. And... Big hit <laughs> by the captain. And that shot is deflected. That's a big hit by the captain. That's Adam Creasy on number 16, Joey Miazga. 7.09 to go in this second period. And... We started this game thinking the Wainwright could be patient, you know, take your time and uh, wear these guys out. But right now, Hillman is the team that is taking it to the Rustlers. I was just going to say that. You and I set it up as a calm and patient game, but this may be high tempo for the rest of this contest. And there literally is no tomorrow final action for these two teams. Of course, they're the top two teams in the Sask Alta League. Rustlers swept the Hitmen in their League Championship Playoff Series. Back on November 19th, also a 5-3 win, the one regular season meeting. Puck played in by Crookshank, and the Rustlers will break out. They'll dump it in. There's the leading scorer, McNabb. Thought he was going to get that puck, but Peterson plays it out. Now here's Crookshank, number 26. He drops it for number 21. That's Kyle Tenney. Puck played around the boards. Dugan now elects to dump it in. And the wraparound attempt won't go. There's Goodwin standing tall as heavy traffic in front with Pacharke in there, number 12, along with, we'll get a number there, looks like Tenney, 
number 21, I believe. Yeah, Tenny started that whole thing. You got a stick high, and you're looking at him uh, check out his shoulder right now. Is there some contact? Yeah, got the stick in the face, and Ooh. he's checking that out as he goes <laughs> off to the uh, great shot, guys. Thanks for queuing that up, Rob Zitlau and, and crew. We got a good crew on hand here. Connor O'Donovan directing today. We've got our full crew here. ICU Video Productions wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the 2017 Double A Provincial Men's Championships. Here come the hitmen again. Here's Renier nearly sneaking through. Two on two break now for the wrestlers. Three on two now. Drop pass shot. Nearly finds its way through Peterson. He steers it aside. Foley can't keep it in at the line. And the Hillman hitmen clear into the wrestler zone. A good back check, a stick lift on McCluskey. You thought he had more time to let that one go. Didn't get everything on that shot because of the back check of the Hillmon defender. Long lead pass to McMahon. He dumps the puck in on a change. There's Costa, number 13, and he's... And there's a big hit oh. from behind. And Cholpec, he's not going to like that too much. And we've got our first really nasty scrum of the tournament here behind Jimmy Peterson. An unfortunate black eye and what's going to turn out to be a great hockey game, but hopefully this doesn't turn into moon hockey from here on in. Just a, a play that we've seen three, four times already, hits from behind, maybe even six, seven times in this tournament as you get a shot of the player there. And the We're going to get a good look at this. Politesky. Here's a good look from our from Matt, our cameraman here in yeah. the corner, and a great play by Costa. Costa's got his back, and then Really just turns his shoulder right into it. And I, again, I, I'm not going to disrespect the character of any player, but something like that happens. You see the back with that close to the boards. You learn that in minor hockey, right? You have that little stop sign. Why the sign, stop sign is there. Stop sign you on bet. the back of the jersey. And I know you might watch this and think uh, it's like something corny to say, but guys have had their necks broken and things like that. So Absolutely. No disrespect to the character of any player. I'm just, I'm a little surprised, Kev, honestly, more than anything, that in situations like that, there's a great camera angle on this. Thanks for queuing that up, crew. Another look from Rob Zitlon, yeah. the tight follow here. Yeah, straight like Jordan Schneider. I don't, that's his first action of the whole weekend, too. So I don't, I, I'm trying to understand the mindset of a player when they see a guy with his back against the board. You see the numbers. Yeah, I just want to understand the mindset. It's no disrespect to who he is, but trying to walk through what's going through your mind when you see a situation like that. But nonetheless, regardless, a great chance here for Wainwright. Again, down 4-3 to three to be able to get back in this game where Hillmont has really kind of controlled the flow of the play. Officials, you bet, and officials working through this with the assistant captain for the Rustlers. That's number 8, Chad Marchand, and the captain for the Hitmen, number 5, Sean Newman. Because don't forget, Herzog got a game misconduct for a similar hit That's earlier true. in the tournament. And so they're working this out. We'll get the official announcement. 5.24 to go here in the second period. I the Hillman Hitman lead 4-3, but the Rustlers have the advantage in shots, 26-18. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, sorry, Kev. I was just going to say, I guarantee that's the argument the captains and the assistant captains are making, that Herzog, a similar penalty, and there's the gate. Great shot on that, uh, Kev. Um, that's far corner, that same kind of play, two in a game, and that changed the tone of that game on Friday night. I guarantee that's the argument being made. We'll get the official word from our public address announcer in just a few seconds. The faceoff will be to the right of Jimmy Newman. It is five on five, but we'll get the penalties sorted out. Chopek. So we have, here's a play out in front, and Renier nearly cashed in. So here's here's the penalty. So Dave, walk us through the penalty scenario. Two here. and a ten for Chopak and two for hitting from behind in a game misconduct for Schneider, which shortens that defensive, which to me is, I'm more baffled on the defensive side than anything because your defense is playing so well. Why do you take a penalty like that? But. And in a situation where you've got regulars out of the lineup, you need every live body you can if you're the hitman. So very undisciplined penalty for a team that has been very disciplined throughout this tournament. And speaking of undisciplined, another penalty for Wainwright, which will put the hitman to the power play, already up 4-3. And here's a shot, big save. Tracy, the captain, guilty of the hook. Will be sent off for two minutes, and now the hitmen are on the power play. Here's Newman, the captain, number five. To Anderson, he tries to get that puck through the slot, but the 
Rustlers clear. And this is a dangerous situation right now if you're Wainwright. Absolutely. This is one more shot, and you're going, how did we get down two goals? Literally, how did we get here? We're supposed to win this game, air quotes. And here we go now. Hitman, Newman now good for check, and there's a penalty called here. Number 17, Brett McMahon is going to be interfering. It'll be goaltender interference on Jimmy Peterson as he took the legs right out from the goaltender. And that's what you fear when you come to the protection of one of your players who gets hit from behind. You're mentally, yeah, he's he's claiming that Jimmy Peterson Had elbowed him. Out, yeah. But th that's the hard thing, Kev, when you come to the defense of one of your players, you mentally unfold. We spoke about that off the beginning. Your body's already adjusted to being tired. You now you're mentally losing it, and Wainwright's got to stay composed. A tired player in any sport makes takes risks, takes gambles, and makes mistakes, and that's what we saw right there. So now we've got five on, a five-on-three power play here for a minute and 11 seconds. 4.09 to go in the period. Five on three here. Now a big chance for the hitman. That shot won't get through. Politeski number three, down low. Now Politeski will play it over to the far side. Inside the circle, shot! But a big save by Goodwin. And the puck cleared. So on the five on three, right now, if you're Hillman, you're thinking, Dave, boy, do we have an opportunity right here, right now. Attack, attack, attack. When you see an open uh, open lane, just like that last shot, skate right in and shoot. And here's the man, Jordy Dugan. Kind of quiet in this bronze medal game, but if they get him going, look out. And Dugan will take the puck down low. Over to Tenney, number 21. Here's Pacharka. Over to Politeski inside the circle. Collapsing in on the goaltender Goodwin. As the hitmen realize here, five on three here for another 10 or 12 seconds. Pass in, inside the circle, over to the far side. Crookshank can't corral that one. Pacharka, number 12, tries to play it out front and the rustlers will clear and we will have five on four a five on four power play for 40 seconds. And here's the other side of this. If you're Wainwright, you get a massive amount of momentum if Hillmon doesn't score on this. Great opportunity to get back in the game. If you can kill the five on three and if you can kill both power plays, that is a big boost for the Rustlers who are only down a goal here. Of course, the Rustlers, the technically the away team in their own in their own building, but uh, that's the way the tournament works. And here's Renier with a lot of room and a great play by Newman to keep the puck in the zone here. Final seconds of this power play as the hitmen work it down low. Now the wraparound attempt changes his mind out back out to back into the corner for Noble. He tries a centering pass, won't go. Now Newman at the point. He'll want and just through. Boy, he had a great opportunity to cash in there and the puck at the side of the net. And the penalty is over. Here come the Rustlers now, three on two against Hillman. Four on two, big block by the captain. And what a defensive play, Dave. And here come the Hillman Hitman breaking out. That's Anderson giving battle and the Rustlers try to wheel around. Pacharka keeps it in. Relentless pursuit by Hillman. Great defensive presence on the penalty kill by Wainwright. We've talked a lot about the positioning of the Hitman. Outstanding job by Gosselin cutting off the path on the three on two. Gosselin now will try to pass it out and that pass is, inter the Hillman pass is intercepted. Here's Brad McNabb. They need to get this line going. As you mentioned, Laporte has a goal, but they want to get Brad McNabb the leading scorer. Speaking of leading scorers, here's Jordy Dugan, number 22, cutting in on goal and Loses his footing, nearly gets a quality chance there. Played out to Woodward, number 77. Big hit behind the play. Big collision between Leggett and Dugan, number 22. Inside, one minute to go in a very entertaining second period, much like the first. Yeah, four goals scored. We've seen a couple of power play opportunities as well as another look of Dugan charging at the net. And Gosser, uh, Goodwin, rather, has got to hold his ground on the post. This game's still wide open. If you're Wainwright, you're a little frustrated that you can't get to the front of the net, but you're only down by one goal heading into the second intermission. This game could be 6-7-3 by now. And on the flip side of things, if you're Hillman, if it's not for your goaltender, it could be out of reach. So it's very wide open already. And if you're Hillman, you have got a lot of confidence going into this third period. And Wainwright has some work to do. 
Here we go. Now Renier taps it ahead, but it'll go on the icing. 39 seconds to go in the second period. Here on this ICU Video Productions broadcast, let's talk about our sponsors a little bit more. Olson's Construction, Wainwright Car Dealers Association, Wainwright Liquor and Cold Beer. Boy, that door's been opened and closed a few times this weekend. Just once or twice, maybe. You got it. Boston Pizza, Doug's Well Service, East Central Painting and Coating, Integra Tire, the Star News, Tim Hortons, and, of course, Wayne Wright Lumber. You can't have a hockey tournament without being sponsored by a lumber company, of course. And here we go. Big save by Peterson on the side, but it's cleared down by the hitman. No icing on this. Foley will grab it, number 55. Behind his own goal here. 15 seconds to go in the period. Anderson, number 47, being chased by Noble. And the wrestlers content to finish the period here, and the puck gets deflected into the Wayne Wright bench with eight seconds to go. Yeah, something so simple, but Brewman just jumping that route, as they say in football, and up there with the stick and forcing it out of play. Eight seconds left, likely not going to get a great offensive chance, but it's something so small and simple that Mann and Newman are doing very well, and like, as well as Paul Teske this game. Coming up in our second period intermission, Dave will have a chat with Rod Boutin, the president of the Sask Alta League, and he's got to be proud. He's got to be one proud president of the league watching hit the top two teams in his league battle it out here for the bronze medal. And uh, if you're the Hillman Hitman and the Wainwright Rustlers, and if you're the president of the Saskalto Hockey League, you're a very proud guy because these two teams are laying it all on the line. There's no tomorrow here. You can use every sports cliche <laughs> you want, no matter what. Your back's against the wall, you're up against the ropes, but here we are in the bronze medal game in the Hillman Hitman lead by one goal, 4-3. Now, Dave, Heading into this third period, what are you expecting out of Wainwright? They're the host of the tournament. They're the defending bronze medalists. What do they have to do to win this hockey game? Yeah, I think, well, more than anything, you got to wear that defense down. They're playing so well. Be physical behind the net. Grind them down, some body checks. Uh, those are some guys that have played a lot of minutes. The Newmans, you know, Newman has logged probably 25 minutes of ice time. you got to hammer him and hit him as much as you can and grind him down. And then when you're doing that, cycle the puck. Make them puck watch. Get your movement around. you got some very talented players on the Wainwright Rustlers roster. I want to see them use a little more of that. And we saw that on their fourth goal on that backdoor play that Tien Anderson was too tired to pick up his check. Laporte had some wide open end and popped it in. If you're Wainwright, I want to see you do that. If you're Hillmont, this is the time. You don't want to sit back, but you'd be okay icing the puck over and over and over and over and over and over, <laughs> and over again to maintain your uh, your legs and, and just ride your hot goaltender. And I think more than anything, don't make any mistakes if you're Hillmont. And do you think we'll see what we saw last night in the semifinal with Wainwright and Daysland? Wainwright got back into that hockey game by picking up the, the physicality part of it. Do you think we'll see the wrestlers now with that shorter bench for Hillman? Will we now see Wainwright start taking the body in this third period? I'd say, but do it with discipline. Be composed. They've already, there was one hit from behind that got them into some hostile territory. They started to unravel a little bit. If you raise the physical game, you want to play on the edge, but do it responsibly. And I think if Wainwright can do that, we might see another bronze medal on the, uh, the host team again. But May, we may even go into overtime, Cam. I might even <laughs> drop that, that fabled O word here. We might as well. This has been so entertaining. Why not have more hockey? Why not? But, but we've got a great interview coming up with Rod Boutin, the president of the Saskalta Hockey League. The score after 40 minutes, the Hillman Hitman 4, the Wainwright Wrestlers 3 here in the bronze medal game of the 2017 AA Provincial Men's Hockey Championships from the Peace Memorial Multiplex here in Wainwright, Alberta. Stay tuned, stay with us. We'll have an interview, and then we're going to have the conclusion of a very exciting hockey game. Stay with us in just a few moments.
All right, just enough time for you to refill your beverage. We're back in Wainwright, the senior double-A Provincial Championships from Wainwright, Alberta at the Peace Memorial Multiplex. I'm Dave Dawson, joined by our special guests today, uh, Rod Boutin, the president of the Sask Alta Hockey League. And Rod, before we get even to any of the other details, what we're going to talk about, is this not a great display of what kind of hockey you're used to seeing all year long? Oh, this is a very excellent display of hockey. The whole weekend, the town of Wainwright, the Wainwright Rosters, they got to be very proud of the provincial championship they're hosting. They did an excellent job. I've been to numerous provincials, and this is a very, very one, very good one they should be very proud of. Before we even got on air, I we were kind of talking about Hillmond, and I would lead in asking you, are you surprised by the performance of Hillmond right now? But I know what you're going to say. You're going to say no. <laughs> That's correct. Hillmond has nothing to lose. They were the uh, underdogs of the whole tournament, but they're also a very strong team, and they have a lot of rivalry with Wainwright through the season the big rivalry on the ice and their friends off the ice a lot of these players have played with one another on other teams because our, our league is such a tight-knit uh, league that numerous teams have numerous players that have played with one another and now against one another so what is it about this Hillmont team uh, Kevin and I have talked a lot about some of the injuries I know there's missing a lot of bodies out of the lineup right now can you unpack that for us uh, yeah, they're, they're a very hurt hockey club, uh, and with our league being a working man's league, both teams are missing players due to work. Uh, all teams fight that all year. Uh, Hillmont actually, unfortunately, has a bad injury bug, too, this year, so between the work and the injury, they're, they're a hurting lineup, but they're still competitive. So, yeah, let's look at this Wainwright team and their kind of a dominance throughout the league this year. Uh, what's the kind of character of this team that you've been able to watch and that's been able to run roughshod, I guess, for lack of a better term, throughout the Sask Alta League this year? Well, they're a team. They're all local guys. They all play together. They get a, a good turnout to all their practices. They get to work on all their drills. They, they're a very well-structured team, and they're usually very, very low penalized. They're, they're a very disciplined team, and... Let's face it, if you uh, put the effort to work together and be together all the time, you're going to play together successfully. For sure. So the Sask Alta League, the largest league in all of the senior AA ranks, uh, what's, the, what's the kind of feel of, of the whole of some of the communities and what's the, the involvement like from a lot of the towns and the following? Well, the, you, you hit the nail on the head. We're the biggest league in Alberta. Uh, we have numerous teams wanting in still. We we kind of base it on how much effort the community is going to put behind their team and and so far all the teams uh, it, it's almost a 50 50 split there's a little one more alberta team than saskatchewan but they uh, all of them have great community support great participation between like players the fans the uh volunteers everything that it takes to have a successful senior hockey team i asked jamie Som the president, uh, the senior president, I should say, a senior director, rather, of Hockey Alberta in the first intermission, I said, do you almost get that feeling senior double-A is kind of the forgotten brother in Hockey Alberta? You have the junior A, junior B. Uh, what is special about senior double-A hockey? Well, this is where the guys that are done playing all their junior, and they want to come play some serious, competitive senior hockey, and I like to say our, our league and, and the other leagues that are at this tournament, too, they provide that for them, competitive players that are not ready to hang up the skates because they're still very competitive and very, they, they, they could easily, if, if it wasn't for age, they could still be playing junior. Sure, there's a guy who's 42 years old playing on Days Land, and that's really no surprise, I guess, right? But yeah. what does the future look like for the Sask Alta Hockey League? You mentioned expansion as a possibility? Uh, yeah, well, I've got four teams wanting in again this year, and uh, it, I, our future, we're very stable and we're not going nowhere. We're, uh, if anything, we, we'll probably end up getting bigger even, which it's hard to believe, but yeah, we'll probably go from 14 to possibly 16 this year. Oh, that's great news, great stuff. All right, well, I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up with this. 5-4 for Hillmont right now, I believe. I got 4-3, excuse me, on the score clock there. Where do you see this third period going? Can I put you on the spot? Uh, well, I know both teams real well. Wainwright, they're... Uh, they're not going to give up. They're they're uh, they're going to. It's I bet it'll go to overtime. You think it'll go to overtime? I think it will. Is there is there a player on each team that maybe um, hasn't really reached their potential this tournament that you may have expected to explode, or somebody that has kind of risen from the ashes that uh, really hasn't 
performed at a high level this season? Uh, well, I can't really say that because uh, our playoff structure, we have a lot of players that have played a lot of hockey in a short period of time because we, our first round is five games and our second two rounds are seven games. So the guys are, they're spent. So I think they're all giving a pretty good effort. I, I would 100% agree. All right, that's a good political way to finish it up, to wrap it up. Uh, uh, Rod, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for coming on, and I guess best of luck in the future with the Sask Alta League. Thank you very much. All right, Rod Boutin, the president of the Sask Alta League, and a 4-3 game right now for Hillmont, and as this man said, we may be going to extra periods. I know Kevin, Don, and myself, we'd be totally okay with that. We'll be back with more from Wainwright, Alberta, and the Senior AA Provincial Championships.
Welcome back to the 2017 Senior Men's Double A Provincial Hockey Championships. I'm Kevin Donnan, along with my broadcast partner, Dave Dawson. And Dave, we have had an outstanding game through 40 minutes and take us through some oh, of these highlights. So much emotion. Four goals in the second period. We'll set it up first by a play that, no, this is going to be, yeah, the giveaway at the blue line. A nice move walking in Laporte, puts it up top cheddar. That was at 115 early in the second period. A nice side angle on that one too where he pickpocketed Newman and then there's that give and go on the side of the net that ends up coming to Renier. Renier behind puts it up front to Anderson is by himself for the second of the game that was 546 and then Wainwright battles back at 1025 so we have Anderson behind the net draws all the defenders puts it back door boom Johnny on the spot Creasy the captain makes a nice move at 1025 and this one the next goal here's another angle at this nice feed Eyes on the back of his head. Makes Peterson bite on that one and slides it through. And then this next one, I said that Peterson tripped up Laporte, but that's a hit from behind into the boards that was no, not called. And then the play goes the other end. And this is where Hillman goes up 4-3. So the puck's behind the net, all alone in front, and Laporte at this time is still laying on the ice behind the net. So the wrestlers were frustrated in what was no penalty call and still no whistle. And that's where we stand. So my apologies to Jimmy Peterson. I thought he tripped him because that's what Laporte looked like he was saying. But he was actually bumped from behind. So that's where we stand, 4-3, to three, with 28-20 uh, shots on goal. You bet. And the wrestlers lead in that department, but they don't lead in the most important department, which are the two biggest numbers on the board. And the Hillman Hitman are 20 minutes away from a bronze medal here at these provincial championships. But I get the feeling... We're going, to, we're going to see a, a bit of a seesaw affair here in this third period. Also want to th throw out a, a thank you to our between period guest, Jamie Salm, between the first and second period. He is with Hockey Alberta. And of course, great interview with uh, Jim Boutin, the president. Rod Boutin. Rod Boutin, thank you, of the, of the uh, president of the Sask Alta Hockey League. And one of the reasons why Alberta enjoys such a great hockey culture and a great hockey community is because of hardworking men and women like the, like our two guests. Uh, that's the heart and soul of Alberta hockey, Dave. Yeah, and I love what Rod said. They're looking at expanding. They have four more teams wanting to get in the league. All smaller communities. You have communities like Irma. You have communities like Hillmont, right? And hotbeds of hockey, which is fantastic. Great to see for the future of hockey in Alberta. Great community building, too, as we've seen here at the Peace Memorial Multiplex. This is the hub of the community. It's where the, the entire town gathers. The I mean, of course, we have a, as you said, that we have a town divided because we <laughs> have the Wainwright Junior B Bisons up in St. Paul. They're playing for a provincial championship. Of course, the wrestlers are here playing for the bronze medal. And later this afternoon, Dave, you get to call this one. I'm green with envy. I got to tell you that. Hey, you're going to be here still, too. I'll still be here. But I'll tell you, boy, are we in for a real treat coming up in the gold medal game after we get through this one, which has been an absolutely fabulous hockey game. So what a treat for our viewers. What a treat for the town of Wainwright, Dave. Yeah, we stayed in a hotel with the Daysland guys, and it's just great to get to know them and see them. And they're, they're jacked. They're ready to go. And here we go. We start. The third period now, 20 minutes away, or or not, from the bronze medal game. As we were, as the president of the league was talking about, hey, we could be going into overtime. There's a wild chance by T and Anderson, number 14. Boy, he'd like to give the Hitman a two-goal lead. But now here come the wrestlers, out of the dressing room and ready to go. Drop pass, shot, and the rebound, score! What energy by the wrestlers here, just. 29 seconds into the period, Dave. Yeah, Mackay gets rewarded for his hard efforts. That's the start they wanted. Creasy with the cross ice pass and leading the three on two charge. Mackay's the trailer. He follows up his original shot. Peterson's out of position. He gets handcuffed by the puck a little bit, but all you need to do is touch it to get it past the goal line. That's what Mackay did, and it's four all, only 29 seconds in to this third period. Just 29 seconds in, and the Rustlers have tied this game at four. Bronze medal game here in the AA Senior Men's Provincial Hockey Championships. And there's the official word. Now the Hitmen break out. Two on one. Here's Dugan. He'll shoot. Big save by the Rustler goaltender, 
Nolan Goodwin, and Dugan is always dangerous when he gets inside the circle. Yeah, Dugan with the hacksaw here coming down the right side. We're going to get another look at the goal for a nice angle there, and you see <laughs> Makai just kind of little hand-eye coordination, puts it off the post and in, and the next stop to play. Great, great follow-up uh, view on that, guys. Thanks for that shot. We'll get a look at uh, Dugan's chance eventually, I think, but he's the heart and soul. Tied to four. Weak shot turned aside by Goodwin, and now the Rustlers break out again. Here comes the leading scorer, Brad McNabb. He'll dump it in. Peterson can't play it. Puck will make its way to the half wall, but not out. Out in front. Now Peterson has trouble handling that puck. And it's right out in front. And what a save! Jimmy Peterson slides over and an absolutely larcenous save on Brad McNabb, Dave. The tournament's leading scorer, McNabb, had that one laying on a tee. And he had the old number one out, ready to clap that one 400 yards. Peterson had to recover quickly, slid across, and saved it. Big save by Peterson, the Hitman goaltender, number 39. This is his second game of the tournament. Alan York, the ex-Columbus Blue Jacket, played in the second game for Hillman. There's a wild shot by Foley, number 55. P pass by Johnson, can't get through. Puck's loose now. Oh, and there's a high stick on callback, and that will be... A penalty against the Rustlers here early in this third period. Just 1.45 to go, and it looks like a high-sticking penalty, Dave. Herzog rolled his eyes and raised his head to the sky as, yeah, maybe a, I will give a bit of an embellishment to number 24, a callback. Um, maybe, I guess you see sure. a stick in the face. You embellish it a bit, but um, either way, you look at a power play for Hillman. A little bit of a, sold it a little bit. Why not? Here's <laughs> Newman now, the captain. Tries to flip it over on the backhand, but it goes out of the zone. And now, here's good for here's good energy on the penalty kill by McMahon. Pass for Anderson, loses it between his skates, and now it goes back into the hitman zone. And here's McMahon following Newman all the way up the ice. Great job by Newman, just fighting that off, focusing on the task it had, which is going north. Here's Brew Man, number four. Part of that outstanding blue line for the hitmen. But the puck is dumped back into the Hillman zone. And here's Jordy Dugan, number 22. PA announcer trying to get the home crowd into it and try and get the Rustlers a lead in this hockey game. Here's Marchand, number eight. He's going to, he's being pursued now by Dugan and Crookshank, and he tr plays it around the boards. Great puck possession kill here by the Rustler is just, yeah, if, if there's any energy that you're trying to suck out of the Hitman right now, is just take the puck and keep it away from him. Puck dumped in, steered aside by Peterson. Here we are with just under four minutes expired. Tie hockey game here. Glad you're along with us. This ICU Video Productions Procast of the 2017 AA Men's Provincial Hockey Championships bronze medal game. And it has been highly entertaining and highly competitive. Here comes the captain, number 18, on the two on one. He's got Laporte shot. Can't get through. Here's Laporte. He turns and fires, won't get through. Laporte's got a goal tonight, this afternoon. Pardon me. Here we go. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> Here we go. And there's a penalty coming up to Hillman. Yep. Looks like number 12. Kelly Pacharka is going to go off for a tripping call, and that's all started up by the legs of Laporte, Kev. You put that perfectly. No give up, and uh, him and Creasy, pardon me, Creasy's the guy with the puck, and yeah, Pacharka just does all he can to prevent that, but between Creasy and Laporte, an excellent shift, creating opportunities shorthanded, and now we're at four on four. Have four on four hockey for five seconds, and then the Rustlers will have a one minute and 55 second power play, and now they are on the power play tie game here in this bronze medal contest here at the Peace Memorial Multiplex. Don't move a muscle because we're in for a great finish here, Dave. <laughs> exactly what Rod Boutin said. And Hillman, the only team in the tournament without a shorthanded goal. Here's McMahon now, number 17. He tries to pass it out front. There's the captain, Newman. And he tries to clear the puck, but it ends up in the hitmen bench. Wainwright is 0 for 2 in the power play in this game so far. 
And on the penalty kill, Hillman a uh, shining, or on the other side, excuse me, Wayne Hillman in the, whatever, I'll just give it back to you. I'm tired too. <laughs> Dwayne. We've done six games since Friday at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Derp, derp. Why don't we just start with that? That's right. Dwayne Paralat makes his first save of the game from the bench <laughs> on that That's one. That's right. The PA announcer said he was starting today. That's right. But he makes his first save of the game. <laughs> 15 he and a half minutes enough yesterday. He made like 45 yesterday. He's probably thinking, you know, can you guys give me a break here? <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm on the, I'm, I'm ready to go in at any time if I need to, but uh, I'm enjoying the rest too. And here's Anderson with that big, uh, using his speed. He's a fantastic skater. Here's Foley, number 55. He looks to shoot, but he'll dump it into the corner, back out to Foley. Looks again, won't go, won't pull the trigger. Anderson on the half wall. Creasy, the captain up front. Oh. And Johnson from the blue line tried to join that, and a wonderful set play by the wrestlers that almost converted. Jimmy P standing tall there, coming across again after giving up that early goal. 29 seconds into the third period, has made a couple of great saves, keeping this game tied at four. 30 seconds left on the power play. Now here we go. Crookshank now, number 26, always dangerous. He's out there on the penalty kill. 20 seconds to go in the man advantage for the wrestlers. Cross ice pass. That's Herzog. Bumping with Crookshank, and the puck is played back into the Wainwright zone. Tie hockey game. Are you expecting things to slow down a little bit, or is this pace going to pick up, Dave? I feel like it's next goal wins almost. I feel like both teams, and actually not even that. I, I, I'm going to recant that statement. I'm going to say it's going to keep the high-flying pace here. I feel like if one team makes a mistake, the next one's going to score, the next one's going to score. It could end 4-4, like it go, go into overtime, or it could be 7-7 in overtime. Absolutely. And it is, of course, the final action for both of these teams. Of course, they, the Rustlers won the Saskalta playoff championships with a four-game sweep of Hillman. Back out to the blue line now through traffic. Nearly found the far post there, the inside of the far post. This is Mackay now, number 21. He'll dump it in. Peterson can't get it. Here's Renier, number nine. And he, he clears. And there is the announcement from our PA announcer. Of course, you've been following the action from St. Paul, and uh, you can give us an update yeah. on the Wainwright Bison. The battle for the Russ Barnes Trophy in St. Paul, the Junior B Championship for the Provincial Championship, is uh, tied at two. Wainwright uh, Bisons and Cochrane Generals. The winner goes off to the Keystone Cup, the national championship. And if you're a citizen of Wainwright, you want to be there and you want to be here, and you can't be two, in two places at once. But it, no matter where you are, you're watching some great hockey. And what a goal by the Hillman Hitman. Number seven, Brad Noble. Dave, what a play. Yeah, that developed out of nowhere. That was that quick in transition, being able to bring it in. A harmless looking break in as we get a shot from the follow cam. The right wing side. Looks like that puck is going nowhere. And again, a blind pass in the front, right onto the tape of Noble. I'm never really a great fan of that pass to nowhere, but callback, the call was answered by Noble, who popped it in, and it's 5-4. 13-23 to go here in the Hillman Hitmen. As we said, there is no quit in this Hitmen team, and they take a one-goal lead with 13 minutes to go. Here's Peterson out of his own net. He tries to play the puck off the glass. Clausen Foley keeps the puck in. Now behind the net. Look at the work by the rustlers here. Bronze medal on the line. Pacharka. There's a shot that nearly is nearly deflected off Pacharka past the goalkeeper, Jimmy Peterson. There's a penalty on the play. Late penalty, and that'll go against the hitmen. I was just gonna say that. Like, I've liked the way the officials have called this game today. I think that there are some calls that maybe were missed and maybe what's a, no referee can ever be perfect, but I think that they've controlled the flow of the game. They've taken away the really rough stuff and allowed the players to be able to find their way through as Wainwright heads to the fourth power play. And you see where the penalty call is here. Charging call, I believe that is. He took two or three strides to go into him. So it'll be a power play for Wainwright. Great chance to tie it up. You bet. And there's Gosselin fans on that shot, and it'll be cleared by T and Anderson, number 14. If you're Hillman, you got to be. There's got to be a little bit of frustration. We got up a goal, and now we take an undisciplined penalty. Yeah, and looking at that replay again, 
I might scratch my head a little bit at that as they called it high sticking because there was no stick. But either way, power play for Wainwright. Drop pass by Creasy. Anderson with the shot well over Jimmy Peterson. Now out in front, there's Creasy. Hits the side of the net. He plays it back to the line. Leggett dumps it in. Creasy giving chase along with the captain of the hit hitman, number five, Sean Newman. Loose puck now. Here's Creasy in control on the half wall. Finds Leggett at the point. He's looking, looking, fires. And that nearly found the back of the net on the deflection. Just goes wide. Here's Spencer Gosselin, number four, over on the half wall. Here's Marchand, number eight. Leggett now. Shot deflected, and it goes up into the netting. 11.34 to go, and we're, we've almost reached the midway point, Dave. Yeah, and here's another look at that uh, penalty call. An unfortunate stanchion is in the way there. That's always... Okay, yeah, another look at that. The stick did get up, so thank you very much, guys. Great job by Connor Goodwill, or Connor O'Donovan and uh, Rob Zitlow and crew queuing that up for us. Sean McClune on the camera Sean, there yeah, in the corner. Great camera shot, Sean. Thank you very much for that. Of course, we have our full production ProCast crew here today. Four cameras and uh, outstanding work by our entire crew. The, the rest of the crew made their way and yeah, on a beautiful drive out here to Wainwright. Jamie Somm from Hockey Alberta was grateful as well. And uh, you said the way that it's all worked out. So, hey, happy to be here. Absolutely. Lots of hockey left, though, Kev. <laughs> Tons of hockey. And I'll tell you, the, uh, the gold medal game a little later on, if it is half as entertaining as this one, boy, are we in for a real treat between the two. A rematch, a gold medal rematch. Here's the shot now, broken up by Politeski. Little ginger on his feet after that as he takes that shot right off the skates. There's a shot that kind of pinballs, deflects down. There's a big shot by Foley, number 61, that nearly finds the twine. Far more aggression by Wayne right here and trying to establish the front of the net, which we didn't see in the second period, so I like that, that adjustment that was made by head coach Dave Leggett as he got a, a shot here of the point shot. But still got to get to the front of the net sooner. I'm still loving what uh, Hillmon defenders are doing in that battle for the front of the net presence because that's where these kind of games are won in the crease. Absolutely. And nothing like a little bit of inspirational bird dance to get these teams going. Nothing like the bird dance to fire you up in a bronze medal game. Here we go. I was doing it. The crowd was doing it. Cotton Eye Joe next. <laughs> well, that's a little too up-tempo for an old guy like me. Here we go. Back to the live action. Here's Woodward number 77. And there's the captain. He has been all over the ice. Stay out in front. Big save by Peterson. Loose puck at the side of the net. The net is off the moorings. And a whistle. But... Wow, Jimmy, Jimmy Peterson. Peterson and Sean Newman yeah. sprawling all over the ice. And do you think the captain wants to get that bronze medal or I, what? The player of the game, I think, too. And here's another look at the sprawling. Kind of blocked there to knock the puck into the corner. And then it comes out front. Peterson with the glove save. And the puck is actually sitting in the equipment of the defender. I believe that was uh, Brew Mann on the ice there and almost knocked it into his own net, but a great defensive presence by the hitman. This is the kind of sequence you'll see in a bronze medal game. We are at the midway point of this third period. Hillman Hitman five, Wainwright Rustlers four. Oh, there's a cross ice pass that nearly converted for the Rustlers. Here's Foley now looking, firing right in on goal. Loose puck at the side now. Hitman are gonna try and clear. Broke and they do. stick. Someone's stick got broken on that shot. McCluskey on the side of the net had another chance. Didn't have his stick down. He could have put that in the open net. Politeski now looking for the lead pass. Two on two now. With Renier the lead. Oh, that was a great shot. Nearly missed the, the near post. Good one had to be sharp on that as that nearly found the inside of the near post. Here's Chopek now. Clausen number six. Puck cleared through the end of the neutral zone. And now here's Brew Mann. Gives Clausen a bump. Noble now, number seven. Makes a nice little move at center ice. There's a hit by Priest. Puck played in and an icing. We're going to talk a lot about the championship and the bronze medal. Obviously, we're playing for a bronze medal. Bronze medal is one of those medals that you don't appreciate till after. That's right? right. Wainwright's like, we lose. It was the bronze medal. But a couple years down the road, you're like, Oh, man, we finished fourth. We could have won the bronze medal. So lots at stake. Great pace to this game. I've loved watching it so far. 9.02 to go, of course. The Wainwright Rustlers lead in shots. Pretty good 
advantage there, 36-23. But as we said, the most important numbers on the board are the two big numbers, and right now the Hitmen lead 5-4 with just under nine minutes to go here in the bronze medal game. Glad you're with us. Double-A Senior Men's Provincial Hockey Championships. And Marchand nearly got a hold of that puck at a glorious chance out front and right out front, and oh, just missed. May have hit the crossbar, Kev. I think it, well, let's take another look yeah, at that look one at because that. that one was, that one was uh, the width of the puck from going in and Peterson covers up. <laughs> so close, that puck just came right out in front. We'll get a great look here from our video crew. Yeah, here's the pass from the left side. Gonna see if we have time to bring it back out in front. Here we go, nearly. Yeah, we'll get another look at that the next whistle, but Marshawn, I believe that puck may have hit the crossbar. Creasy now. The captain for Wainwright. Tenney now giving chase. And the hitman with this one goal lead, 8.16 to go. And here comes, there's Jordy Dugan. Tries to unleash the shot, but it's deflected into, into the net. So let's take a look at some of our sponsors and throw out some shout outs. Barrett Oilfield, Battle River Electric. Bunge North America, ACOM, Club Mojo's, Meat Co., Cutting Edge Adventures, Don Isman Professional Corporation, Hall & Company, Crop Production Services, Olson's Construction, just some of the many fine provincial sponsors here at the AA Provincial Men's Hockey Championship. Thanks for the reminder, Dave. we got to do, got to do some business every once in a while. That's what a team's for, Kev. It's, been, right. it's been fun working with you all weekend long. We've called seven, six games now, seven. <laughs> have to go. It's been a real privilege, Dave. It's been great to work with you. And as, as we've traded back and forth, we did odds evens, and I, I, I have the privilege of doing this bronze medal game. And I'm, I'm going to admit something to you, Dave. When we were talking before, and we talked, uh, I talked to Brew Man before the game, and they were undermanned, seven regulars out of the lineup, or maybe really three. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about the gamesmanship. But uh, we thought that Wainwright would come out and, and, and really mm. take control. But uh, as we said, you can't measure heart. No, it's been a treat. This has been an excellent hockey game. Not what I expected. I'll confess that. I predicted way, <laughs> Me way, way too. more. Me too. And here we go now. Here's Laporte, number 41. He's got a goal. Beautiful pass. And a near goal by number seven, Ross Herzog, as he was in on alone. Now behind the net, here's Herzog. Battling with who else? The captain Newman, but he loses his helmet and he has to go straight to the bench. I think Peterson even got a blocker on that shot by Herzog too, which blows my mind. Peterson has just absolutely been outstanding for the hitman in this contest. Earlier in the tournament, we talked about his rebound control and how he was struggling. In that 9-2 loss in Daysland, he was fighting the puck, plain and simple. He was a lot, but he's really bounced back and here's another look at that chance, and yeah, it looks like he may have got a piece of it, but uh, I think Herzog just overcommitted and tried to pick that corner too intently. Either way you look at it, still 5-4. And here we go, there's Johnson just over the crossbar. That nearly, and now a battle behind the net. That's McMahon, number 17. He plays it to Woodward, good cycle by the Rustlers. Trying to center that puck out into the slot, but once again, that blue line of the hit, man. Mm. Keeping things on the perimeter, Dave. Absolutely outstanding work. There's the, the shot net. and the rebound, and it won't go. There's number 12, Pacharka, and he'll clear it down. No icing on the play, and Goodwin will play it. I really want to see Wainwright use Cody Johnson on the backside. He had a great, he has a goal already in the tournament. He's got a cannon. I really want to see them let him cue one up. And if you're the wrestlers, you want to set up that heavy shot as well, so they've got to get him in the open. And we'd like to see Brad McNabb get going on the score sheet as well in this contest. Yeah, we he, barely mentioned his name. That's right, and he was absolutely robbed by Peterson in the second period. So, here we are. 5.50 to go here in this bronze medal game. What an individual effort, but it is called on the offside. Number nine, Scott McCluskey. Oh, boy. Good heads-up play by Brewman, who kept McCluskey offside. They were tangled up with the blue line. We'll get another look at that. And he comes in and makes sure, oh no, that's not McCluskey, excuse me. That was number 21, Kyle Tenney, who kept him offside and he knew that that would get the whistle. Great heads up. And here's Tenney now, number 21, crosses in. Played down by Crookshank, he'll dump it in. 
opportunity to be provincial action. The Wainwright Bisons have a 4 2 lead over the Cochrane Generals in the gold medal game. Want to thank our PA announcer as the Wainwright Bisons are up in St. Paul and they're enjoying a two goal lead right now. So hopefully the Bisons can close this one out. And if you're a Wainwright fan, you want the Rustlers to tie this game up 5 17 to go here in this third period of the bronze medal game. And we've got a Hillman Hitman shaken up, or that could be just simple. You know what? Let me take a bit of a break yeah, here. Yeah, no kidding. I think that Newman just uh, dropped on that puck to take a breather. The Wainwright Bisons, the number one ranked team all through the Alberta Junior B throughout this season. Five different leagues in Alberta Junior B all congregating in St. Paul. And as, yeah, you got to look at Newman just sleeping on the puck going, give me a breather. <laughs> Earlier in our broadcast, we threw a shout out to B. Braz, who sent us a message via the internet, who's a Rustler fan watching this game. And we've got we've had great coverage and great interest throughout the city here, at, or throughout the town of Wayne, right? Great support by the fans and the volunteers and organizers. There's a shot that won't get through. And now here come the hitmen. Here comes Anderson. Tries to play it through in a nice defensive play by the Rustlers. Yeah, great job by Gosselin, who's been excellent defensively a number of times in this game that we've talked about already. He's really been the anchor on the back end, paired with Leggett there. Leggett uh, has been prone to a couple of miscues, but Gosselin, an excellent stick on the two-on-one, where there was a broken Hitman stick, or it could have been a three-on-one. You see Anderson waited a little bit too long to pass it, and Gosselin has that active stick, controlling that lane, keeping it at 5-4. Gosselin with great vision and a great waited knew the pass was coming and cut that off here we go with the rustlers now Ooh, that nearly squeaked through steered aside now played up rustlers now back in their own zone and an ear tip in by dugan as crookshank nearly found number 22. he was going to pass the whole way he was waiting for that one comes number 61 cody foley And here's a shot now. Oh, and that nearly got through the goalkeeper. Just missed the post. That was number 21, Morgan Mackay. And the hitmen can't clear. Here's Newman, the captain. We've called his name all game, and he'll lug the puck out and play it over to the far side to Crookshank, who will dump it in as the hitmen make a change. We're seeing more odd man opportunities right now for the hitmen because the Wainwright defense is more active. They're getting caught in compromising situations, which is fine. You're down by one goal, south of four minutes left to go. you got to take chances. 3.45 to go in this bronze medal contest. What exciting action we've seen, and don't move a muscle. Stay with us here, this ICU Video Productions broadcast of the bronze medal game. These two teams, no strangers to each other. Top two teams in the Saskalta League. Here comes McNabb, the leading scorer of the Saskalta League. Back out to the point, there's Johnson. They want to set him up with that heavy shot, Dave. Yep, I want to see him let it rip. Get it back to the point. He's going to step up on the back door, though. Maybe that's what they got set up. Here we go, now trying to get the defense involved now. Centering pass won't go, and as you said, Dave, a great call where you said if you're the Hillman Hitman, you're content to just dump the puck down the ice, try to avoid the icing, just play it through the neutral zone and into the rustler zone. You don't Three wanna, minutes to go. Yeah, sorry, Kev. You don't want to sit on a one-goal lead because that's dangerous to do. You still want to attack, but if you get in a compromising position, ice it. Absolutely. Here we go, Sean Newman now, the captain. Takes his player out right out in front and a great chance by the Rustlers and a great clear by the leading scorer, Anthony Renier, sacrificing the body to clear that. Let's take a look at this one, Dave. Best game I've seen from Renier all tournament long. 30 points, 15 goals, and 15 assists in the regular season. You see the wraparound save there. And Renier, he's calling for a tripping penalty. Looks like more than anything, he lost his footing sprawling for the puck. 2.43 to go in this bronze medal contest. Wainwright Rustlers, the host team in that nearly got through Peterson had to be sharp as it just went wide ran now the rustlers that's McCluskey trying to jam one in at the side of the net at this stage of the game Dave it doesn't matter what it looks like yeah I think it's going to be stop at your play stop at your play stop at your play stop at your play for the next two minutes and 30 seconds that could take another half hour to finish this game but if you're Hillmont you're okay you're playing for the bronze medal. Nobody thought Hillmont was going to win the bronze medal coming into this tournament let's be honest and they're in a position right now to be set up to win a bronze medal. But if you're Wainwright, attack, 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 attack. Bodies in front. Face off outside the hitmen zone. Rustlers now. 
looking to make it two bronze medals in consecutive years here at the AA Provincial Men's Hockey Championships. Played out, but now dumped in by Leggett. And there's a pass by Politeski, and Renier gets spun around as the wrestlers now. Gosselin, the defenseman, he joins the attack, gets a shot. Peterson steers it aside now. Back out to Leggett. Leggett nearly loses the puck, and now Anderson nearly grabbed that loose puck, and Gosselin retreats, Anderson spins, and, and fires. Anderson Renier going to get some big minutes here in the dying minutes. Watch the goaltender, number 31, Nolan Goodwin. 140 to go here, bronze medal game. Hillman Hitman up 5 4. Here's Jordy Dugan nearly stealing the puck from Mackay. Puck dumped in. Look for Goodwin now, but Newman clears it out. 130 left. Goodwin still in between. He's not even at the hash marks. He's sitting in his crease still. Every forward for the Wainwright Rustlers saying, Newman. <laughs> totally. <laughs> if we haven't caught that Seinfeld <laughs> reference, Newman. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> Had to throw that in. I don't know Good why. one's out. How did it take me this long through this <laughs> tournament? True. Here we go. Rustlers out in front now. Side of the net. Here's Mackay. Nearly 105 to go. Net empty. Six attackers for the Rustlers. Bronze medal on the line. Final minute of play. Got to get a clear, and they do. Here come the hitmen. Clearing the zone. Creasy, the captain. And Anderson plays it back. Bit of a miscue and a miscommunication. 40 seconds to go now. Rustlers, do or die time. They Hitmen cut off the pass. Here's Renier firing. Empty cage, and it won't go. He misses by about ooh, two and a half feet there, Dave. Anthony Renier's had an incredible game. That's a mistake. You don't want to get focused on taking shots for the empty net. Puck possession. Don't turn and fire. You know you have your whole defense to play with who've been excellent. This could be and. Yeah, the uh, coach, Dave Leggett for Wainwright's going to call timeout because he knows he's got a great opportunity. But Anthony Renier, there's that tendency. You're in a spot to win it. You go, empty net. I want to yeah. shoot. And that, and from there, the net looks about yeah. eight feet wide. Oh, it's a soccer net from there, right? But you got to maintain your composure. You don't take shots at an empty net from your side of center. So don't get ahead of your game. Don't get too crazy. If you're Dave Leggett, what are you drawing up, Dave? If I'm Dave Leggett, I get all the bodies to the net like we've been talking about. One pass to one point, a pass across for a one-timer. Either that or you cycle it around, get it back to the point, cross ice for a one-timer as well. You want to get Peterson moving from left to right post or right to left post and get bodies in front of the net so he's got to make a decision to try and fight for the puck. 35 seconds to the gold, to the bronze medal. Gold medal game comes up next. This is looking like a gold medal game. Yeah, it's got the emotion of it. Absolutely, 25 seconds. Here's Laporte now at the blue line, takes a bump. Now... Rustlers gain the zone. Hitmen try to clear. 19 seconds to go. Hillman trying to hang on here. Frenzied pace. 12 seconds to go. Hillman now seconds away from the bronze medal. And they will have it. The Hillman Hitmen have won the 2017 Senior Men's AA Provincial Hockey Championship bronze medal. What a performance by the Hitmen, Dave. This is, so far, the story of the tournament. Absolutely, and Tian Anderson with a hat trick to finish it off. What better way to top it off for Hillman? Defensively was the Achilles heel for the Hitmen early on. They shored that up. That's the reason why they came out and won the bronze medal. And if you're Wainwright, it was the gamesmanship that I think threw you off at the beginning. You see all these bodies. We're going to come in and win this game 10 0. The Hillman Hitmen played the game and they deserve it. They won the bronze medal. What a performance by Hillman. Great game by the Rustlers. The, I mean, the Rustlers had, uh, it was a highly competitive game. Fantastic bronze medal action here. And we've got a good one coming up. Daysland, of course, the defending provincial champions taking on the Nanton Palominos. And we'll have the player of the game. And Dave Foley, our camera guy, has got the Hillman group here. And uh, boy, it's going to be it's going to be a fun drive home if you're all yeah. the way back to Hillman, well, Saskatchewan. Let's start off with your conversation with Brew Man before the game and just the mindset they were in. And defensively, him and Sean Newman, the anchors, I would give the player of the game to either one of those along with Peterson. I think Peterson deserved it too. But defensively, 
he would have faced 67 to 70 shots if not for some of the work of the defense in front of him. So credit that start and your conversation that set the tone for that. That's the captain, Adam Creasy, and he laid it all out on the line for the Rustlers. Had a goal in this game, and he can take a great deal. Two goals in the game. Thank you, Dave. He had a, and Adam Creasy had a fantastic Jimmy performance in this game. And Jimmy Peterson, you, I mean. 37 saves. 37 saves, and I mean, and some huge saves, and, and with, with some big stops right on the doorstep. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, both teams can take, Dave can take a great deal of pride in their performance. Absolutely. I think the Wainwright wrestlers have nothing to hang their heads over as you see the bronze medal uh, being, or the officials, being presented with some accolades there. And Fantastic work for the men oh. in stripes, too, in this game. It was, uh, you know, like, we, like you said. Tough to crawl. Tough to corral, but at the same time, you know what they did is is they kept the rough stuff to a minimum. They, they made the calls they had to make, but they let the players play. There was a hit from behind in the second period, Kev, there that I thought it was going to get out of hand where there was some of the jumping in where Schneider got kicked out of the game, and I figured at that point in time it was all going to unravel, but the referees did a good job keeping it under control. Now, here are the handshakes. Greatest tradition in all of sports. And I love the first one. McNabb and uh, Newman on their show of respect. You bet. This is the greatest tradition in sports right here. Only hockey does this. You know what? You can battle it out for 60 minutes. You can, you know, you can get the stick up on, on the guy against you. But at the end of the game, uh, this is what hockey is all about. Battling it out. As we've talked about, there are players here who are in their 40s, players are in their 20s. But the, 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 the most common denominator is just love of hockey. And I'll tell you, we have had, this is our sixth game. We've got one game to go. The gold medal showdown, the rematch between the Daysland North Stars and the Nanton Palominos. But uh, we're in for a great one. And boy, did we get a chance to watch a great one here and, and call a great one. 6-4 win for the Hillman Hitmen here and their triumphant. And as we said, that trip back to Saskatchewan, boy, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it'll be a fun bus ride. And they came into this tournament, the fourth seed in the Sask Delta League. Elk Point and Dewberry were number two and three with obviously Wayne Run at number one. So 13 and six on the season. Nobody expected them to take down Wainwright. And we expected Wainwright to maybe battle for a gold medal. And if not for a couple of discipline issues, they very well could have been there. But hey, if ifs and nuts were candies and butts, uh, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. And I probably <laughs> screwed that up because I'm tired as I'll get out. But what a fun weekend it's been. And I've enjoyed Hey, Here come the bronze medal presentations. Let the public address announcer take things over as our first intermission guest, Jamie Salm, has the honor of doling out some bronze medal here, bronze medals here, and the uh, the smiles are awfully big on the hitmen, and and certainly some disappointment for the wrestlers. They will they captured the bronze medal last year at these championships, but uh, the wrestlers have nothing to hold there. Uh, you know, they, they don't have to hang their heads. They are the Sask Alta champions. Yep, as so we had a good look at the uh, hitmen receiving their medals here. Dwayne Paralat did the old uh, fist bump to the air, and you know what? <laughs> these guys may. Uh, it may be that unspoken joke. You're like, oh, I won bronze. I want to win gold. But again, it's the medal that you're not going to appreciate that until two years down the road. You can go, you know what? I did win a medal in that tournament, and it's going to sting for Wainwright for a little bit. But have some fun with it. Well deserved. And on the Wainwright side, it's tough to watch a medal ceremony. But you know oh, what? Yeah. I'm a firm believer in I love the fact that you get to watch a medal ceremony because what that does is puts that fire inside of you that goes, we didn't win. It sucks right now, but boy, I miss that fact of getting a medal. It creates that competitor inside you. It creates that intimidation. And I know sometimes in sports and the world we're getting into, you know, people might think, oh, why do you have to make them watch the medal ceremony? It creates the competitive nature in your heart. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, the one thing that uh, that we had talked about is you don't have to ha you don't have to get the gold medal to be a champion. No. Absolutely not. And both both of these teams, both the wrestlers and the hitmen, these are champions throughout their communities. And here's a really nice salute by the wrestlers to their home crowd and, and to their community who have put on such a wonderful show here in the town of Wainwright. And um, we've had an outstanding tournament here so far. And, of course, the hitmen are going to pose for that, uh, the all-important yeah. uh, that fantastic, another fantastic hockey tradition started by oh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky and the Oilers in 1988. That when guy they knew all a thing gathered. or two about winning, eh? You know I how think to win a he game? knew a little yeah. bit about that. And, of, and yeah. of course, uh, as we mentioned, this bronze medal 
performance for the Hillman to Hitman and Brew Man said it before the game. You know we're you know we don't have a lot of uh, you know we're missing some regulars. We got some guys out of the lineup. He said we've got 60 minutes to go. We're gonna throw it all out there and boy did they ever, Dave. You got to be impressed by the Hillman Hitman. Brew Man, while well, those guys are gonna have a brew, man, <laughs> and celebrate this one because that was well deserved. As you get. Uh, yeah, they got the team picture pose there, and as he mentioned, just a great celebration of the game of senior hockey in chatting with Jamie Som, in chatting with Rod Boutan, the two guys that uh, you get a great shot of what it looks like. Well, here's some replays, yeah, rather. Yeah, let's take a look at some highlights. Why don't we do that? Because why, why wouldn't we want to take more looks at this hockey game? Yep, and I believe these are the third period goals that we're getting a look at here. And here's... This is the whole slate. That's oh, the whole slate. Okay, yep, there's... The goal by Creasy, that shot towards the that tied it up early in the early stages of the game. That one that evaded the blocker. And then there's that miscue by Leggett behind the net on the cycle. The centering pass right on the stick of Jacobson who put it up to make it 2-1. to one. And then Laporte will be the next goal at 1.15 of the second period to open it up. And a nice move, and he went top shelf. Beating goaltender Jimmy Peterson. Then at 5.46, the second goal for T and Anderson right on a pillow as it came from the side of the net. And Anderson, surprised by how wide open he was, pops it in. That was at 5.46. And then at 10.25, the second goal for Captain Creasy. The back pass just deked out Jimmy Peterson. Had no chance on that one. 36 seconds later, though, on that controversial goal <clears throat> that we're going to see right away here, excuse me. Creasy, the that, player of the game. Yeah, that hit from behind. Okay, that hit from behind that uh, went uncalled that Wainwright fans might uh, be a little bit unhappy about. Then that puck comes down deep. Centering pass right in front to Timothy Priest, who makes no mistake. That was at 11.01. Then that was the end of the second. And they open the third period. Two on one here, four, three on two rather for the wrestlers. And Mackay gets his own rebound, pops it in. That was 29 seconds into the third. And then the Hitmen come right back again. And now with Snowball, that blind pass right on a pillow at 6.37. And then the empty net goal to cap it all off to make it 6-4. to four. The hat trick goal for T and Anderson. And that's where we finish it all off. The Hillman Hitmen, the bronze medalists. What a fantastic bronze medal game we've had here at the Peace Memorial Multiplex, and what a fantastic tournament. But there's still more to come. One game left. We've got one game left, Something and it's on a the doozy. Yep. I think there's a little bit on the line I here. Days so, yep. Land and the Net and Palomitos will meet in the gold medal game, and we want to thank you for joining us on this ICU Video Productions broadcast of the bronze medal game here at the 2017 Alberta Senior Men's AA Provincial Hockey Championships. The Hillman Hitmen come away and earn the bronze medal with a 6-4 win over the Wayne Wright Rustlers. We want to thank our hardworking crew, our broadcast crew, who put it all together. Executive producer and camera operator Rob Zitla, technical coordinator and camera operator Dave Foley, our director Connor O'Donovan, switcher and graphics Kyle Matz, and the men in the corners Matt Mosswich doing great work, and Sean McLoon, and of course my broadcast partner Dave Dawson, who will be calling the gold medal game in just half an hour's time, and ICU Video Productions. We don't webcast, we procast, and we do amateur sports professionally. And make sure you stay with ICU Video as we will bring you the gold medal game, the rematch between Daysland and Nanton Palominos, face off at 4 p.m. And we're sure glad you joined us. Once again, the final score from the bronze medal game here at the Alberta Senior Men's AA Provincial Hockey Championships, the Hillman Hitmen 6, the Wainwright Rustlers 4. We'll see you in just a few moments with the championship game. Thanks for joining us here from Wainwright. <laughs>